Sundance versus Big Zack. I'm gonna look at that one. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Uh, Zankar is like an old Uber. We don't know how uh, rusty is, and Sundance is a pretty solid gold. All right, looks like they've already so started. All right, so in the green we have a uh, Big Zack here, starting off with a Bach factory, and then in the uh, kind of a weird greenish blue, <laughs> not sure what to call that color, uh, we have Sundance also starting starting off bot. Both players are playing standard. But this is literally the first second of the match. It is on Forgery, which is a Forge style map where you kind of just generally spawn pretty close to each other. It's a pretty violent map, is how I like to describe it, where games tend to end early and very decisively. And a feature of Forgery maps is actually moving your commander forward. If you move your commander forward to like these mechs or over here, it's quite safe to do so and pretty dangerous for them because they can't really hit the back of your base they have to get drifters um, there or uh, transports and there's these sides here that you can lock down if you can lock down this ramp you usually are able to lock down these peninsulas uh, but drifters will be a play and we'll see if these uh, players utilize it right now uh, big zinc he's kind of going for an odd build he's going mass energy and a bot factory with a uh, four and Sundance is just playing a bit more standard going uh, air going ground getting some opening uh, docks pressure now what we usually see is that uh, these are pretty hard to contest but if you can just kind of get an air fab or transport a ground fab there it's kind of easy to pick up and it looks like Big Zeng is going straight into tier two this is a highly unusual play uh, Sundance certainly sees this we'll see what his reaction is but uh, Zank has a lot of metal in base. He's got uh, five here, and he's going to secure his four over here. Um, and Sundance, he's uh, playing with four fabs, and he's uh, getting a little bit of defense in his base, some anti-air, and uh, that's uh, not what he needs right now. He's building a fighters. That's wasted metal because Zank has no nothing else. He's just going straight into tier two. Now the proper way to do that is just to have one more factory and you can even go into tier 2 factory yourself and just take the map and get a metal lead despite them going into this more quickly. Oh, my dogs are going crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, just one moment. Kiwi, can't find Kiwi. I gotta do some admin stuff. Well, back to this game. So, here's the issue. Sundance is going right into more uh, tier 1. And he's still building ants. Uh, slammers crush docks and strikers. And I'm just seeing a lot of... And it, they play really well into ants. So he's building up this force and he's probably just, just going to death push. Either into um, Sundance's uh, base or just take control of the entire map and make more moves. He's also going into air getting uh, his presence into there and so bombers and the things like that they could bomb this entire force there is no anti-air in it but that issue will be rectified soon enough I believe however <laughs> Zang is building a lot of scouts uh, a little bit interesting there and forced to build a, a point defense uh, turret but uh, I'm not sure about this I'm not seeing any drifters okay we see uh, one drifter so far it's, and one drifter out on the map but need a lot of drifters oh and I see why uh, Zink does not want to go for the AA because his commander will be the AA he's just pushing it forward this is gonna be a very very strong push I don't know if um, Sundance can survive the only way he can survive is to get some combat fabs and get some mines up and surprise Zank but I think this this is a very killer move, and uh, Zank is 
probably going to control his forces pretty well. Kills quite a bit of docks pretty efficiently. Doesn't lose too much. Ah, oh, loses more uh, units there. His army's quite low. He can't really hit from the side to, you know, curb this insanity that's going straight at him. And now Zank's on the front line and he's trading uh, shots with Sundance. A pretty brutal one factory opening. Just punishing a player that isn't ready for it. And Sundance just didn't have the proper answer for it. He saw it and everything. He saw the tier 2 factory go down immediately. But that is kind of what happens when, <laughs> when you just don't have the right answer and a strong player can punish for you. Like, uh, Zenko was playing this map really well, just taking full advantage that he had five very safe mechs, and these four were relatively easy. He didn't um, quite take them, but yeah, it was able to showcase going up right onto Tier 2 Factory within moments. Ferret Master versus Ares, Atlas Lord. Let's see how that's going. Atlas Lord is a uh, team game player. He tends to just play down one map, and this map could actually be an advantage to him because there's not too many lanes to focus on. Oh, and Ferret's higher on metal income, but he's not utilizing it, and Atlas is hit in the front of his face. He's got way more slammers out. Coming in with a slam jam. Gonna be very efficient here if they don't miss. Oh no, they're missing. They're bugging. Oh, he reset. Okay. Gets a lot of damage there. Pulls back, sees the Pelter, takes the map. Uh, Ferret does take quite a significant lead, taking the back here. I don't think uh, Atlas knows that. And it looks like a lot of damage has been done on the map already. Ferret is going to get Gillies and uh, whittle this down. He's also playing Drifters, which is a smart move to react to with, uh, with uh, old Slammers only. If there's nothing on the Slammers, Drifters will trade them out properly. It looks like Atlas Lord is bringing his commander as a desperation move. Could work though, it could kill that and surprise him. But um, yeah, with Ferret with a 100 metal lead and he is fully utilizing it, that's going to be... It's going to be a problem there. <laughs> yeah, welcome Zath Kith to the uh, Dreadnaughty stream. Glad to have you here. Get this all uh, posted up. Real quick. All right. Well, walls do work against gillies. They they take a while to chip down. Their their punching power isn't very high. And um, Atlas Lord is getting into this trade, but there's just a solid... I really should take that slammer <laughs> voice back off for the Emperor, but I love it so much. Oh, Atlas is targeting down the Gillies, though. Like, he, he's sniping them out. He can play the long game. Oh, no, he's pushing forward. He, he thought he had it. He was going to go for the Uber Cannon and just miscalculated. There, there were still a bunch of slammers up and just loses it. Ferret taking the, a lot of the map and kind of showcasing his uh, map skills. Whereas uh, Atlas Lord really focusing one lane. Doing it well, but that's all that he had. Easy. Poor, <laughs> poor Atlas. You tried, man. You tried. I love you, bro, though. Alright, well, we'll get that reported in then. Holy crap, we had our first upset of the day. Hatsune beat client. Oh. <laughs> Kiwi's... It, it's seven minutes into the match, and Kiwi's just randomly 100 metal ahead. Sounds like a Kiwi game. Um, yeah, a vehicle push is a good idea, except uh, Kiwi properly uh, saw that out and has the Blue Hawks in position. Whew. The mines here are not a bad idea. Sometimes Ubers run by and just totally lose all their units and don't notice. Okay, well, I think I'm just gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna report this quite yet, and uh, looks like Potassium and PA soldiers still up. Uh. Yeah, 
Yep, GG there. Okay. All right, uh, spawning with the blue color, future gnome, and Sundance in his weird blue-green color. <laughs> so Sundance kind of got slapped by that uh, one bot factory opening. We'll see if that, uh, if he can kind of recover from that and play against future gnome. Uh, Sundance is higher seed than future, and I think he is a little bit better, but these two players are obviously um, very even caliber. It could go either way. Just get all my hockeys down, and it looks like we do have a bit of an aggressive opening. Uh, two boom bots on the first two fabs. Usually you get three fabs and you start getting boom bots out. If you even get boom bots out. It's a little dangerous because people like playing docks, but it is doable. You can always snipe mechs, you can always uh, check to see if they do not uh, put their uh, docks with their fabrics. It's very good at punishing. And you know what? It's working out just fine. Future Gnome sees these two fabs undefended. There's no docks, no Icarus here. They're going to go in. He sees the scout, gets one, doesn't get the other. All right, still a good pickup for him. Then over on the other side, we got four uh, bot opening. Kind of playing with aggression and hoping that uh, Sundance doesn't have a counterattack. We do have five streaming across the map, and we do see a bomber coming, though. Another boom bot goes down. Uh, Sundance didn't take too much damage. Two boom bots for one fab. Not too big of a deal. What's big a deal, though, is that all that aggression is going to put him on the back foot. And he... But he does have his bomber. Future Gnome also has a bomber, but it's not an aggressive position. He's just holding it back now. And it looks like they're going to just start building up uh, a solid base. But we do see Future Gnome taking a bit of a lead with this eco. Securing a turret here. I don't like this position too much. I'd rather have the turret in a more aggressive location. Locking down this lane. But uh, this is quite defensive. And it's fine. And we can also see some drifters coming in through here, so even then it's not going to be protecting those. Like if I were to place that turret, I would put it right in the middle here. So that if drifters come, it'll be able to defend those. Alright, we see some docks coming forward. They are killing those uh, bots. And we see bombers over here. He's just killing everything. We're down to two fabs from the six that future gnome had. Micros his uh, faber to stay alive. Loses some docks there. We're seeing Future Gnome uh, get real pressure on. Stinger comes in, saves the, saves this Faber though, but now he's going to be on the back, back foot, and we see Sundance expanding. They're still both even. A lot of aggression from both of them. Cleans up these two docks before they can kill this Max. Very low health. Let's see if those two uh, kill that. And we do have some ants on the forward position now. Good scouting locations. Some strikers on the backside. We're getting a lot of action already from these two players. Usually don't see too much um, aggression where they're constantly using their units at lower levels. But uh, this is quite different from these guys. They're, they're not as accurate with their defenses and with their attacks, but they are certainly aggressive. And this game really rewards aggression. Uh, future Gnome right now. He is lower on metal, but he's not in the red. And he's uh, building up a proxy factory. Uh, where are these two going? Oh, looks like he just decided to build there first. Got quite a bit queued up. And we'll see uh, who goes into Tier 2 first. I'd, I'd be thinking about starting uh, Tier 2 in about a minute, but it looks like uh, they want to get their uh, proxy locations down. Bit of trades in the center there. Wasn't able to catch that, unfortunately. Um, Future Gnome doesn't have much of a presence on the map, but these are ants. Sundance doesn't have vehicles quite yet. So these will be cleaned up pretty efficiently. And we see the two docks come in here. They can pick off this uh, cheap one right over here, and they did kill off some fabs as well. Unfortunately, I seem to be missing everything. Bad casting dread. <laughs> Alright, some more cleanup here. It's going to be pushing down this line. There is an ant anchoring with this. And we see uh, two docks and a spark. If he micros, he can keep these alive and kill this. But if he doesn't, then the vehicles will win. We are seeing a bit of an air advantage. Uh, never mind. No air advantage for either. And 
Sundance was trying to kill an Inferno of all things, and this spinner here is just taking advantage of of that uh, mistake. Sundance does, does pull back, but does he pull back again? And Future Gnome takes the air lead. Jeez. <laughs> Dead even. Future Gnome needs more metal. Sundance is now spending. He's going into tier 2. Just so much aggression. It looks like those two docks weren't able to kill that mechs, unfortunately. And are these going to run into Inferno? Yep. A little bit of efficiencies right there from uh, Future Gnome. A bit of a blunder from Sundance. But on the, this side, is, is he going to take this? Well, he's got the drifters, he's got the ants. They can clean them up as long as they don't fire back and they don't uh, micro, and they don't. So he he's pretty efficient in that trade. Pushes through, but what is he going to push into? Tier 2 uh, defense, can kill off this mechs, can try and go over here, but there's going to be so many reinforcements that I doubt he's going to get much damage. And back over on this side, we got some Grenadiers going. I don't like it when players build Grenadiers because there's no obvious forward uh, turret that uh, Future Gnome is placing. They're all on his side of the map. If they're in the center or on uh, Sundance's side, then Grenadiers make sense. Otherwise, they're not very good combat units. The only way you can have them be good combat units is if you have a huge number of them, like 20, 30, and they can actually start uh, spraying the ground and kill things. Uh, looks like Future Gnome's really just starting to take the center of the map, uh, getting a lot of his vision. I don't know if he'll push through or not. It seems like this force will. But the rest of them are just kind of securing this central location. But on the back side, we do see Sundance is taking... He's getting into Future Gnome's kind of side of the base. There's kind of just this weird little pinch here where you... You kind of control this part. And you can kind of control this inside of your base. And you just have this big area to play with. But if they get inside of that, it can be very irritating to dislodge them. And really get these attacks going on these lanes here. We do see uh, Future Gnome go forward. I do like this. When you're going, when you're expanding to the center of the map, it's better to place down a turret first, secure the location, then get your mechs. Whereas, if it's on your side, you generally want to get your mechs first before you build any turrets and let your army do uh, your protection for you. You just got to get that metal income. But when you're on this, like, these things go up within like 20 seconds. And if they don't notice that they don't have pressure then you can kind of get it up without an issue. But Sundance does see it. Does he have radar? I don't... I think he just happened to walk in and uh, get that. The future Gnome really is paying attention, though. He did pull that one fat back, lost the other, but showing that he is seeing these things going on. And there's just so much action going on the map as well. Controlling the air, controlling uh, this side, and still being able to see that this Fabra was under threat and pulls it back to safety. A nice clean up there, but we still got kind of a very, um, just some ants sitting here, just killing off uh, docks that are rallied to this location for free. Not a good sign for Future Gnome, but they are both um, pretty similar on income. Future Gnome did get into tier 2 first, and uh, Sundance is finishing us up second. He's placing his commander in the front here. I do quite like that. You don't need to have turrets in this location. You can put your commander and it can kind of anchor for you. Although it starts to get later later on it starts to get dangerous where you um, a lot of the action can just straight up kill your commander like we saw in that uh, ferret master game where ferret just simply killed Ares lord when Ares lord put his commander in the front with 10 slammers and just dps it down too quickly still a uh, overwhelming air force for future gnome that is something that is going for him uh, we'll see if they either of them go in, goes into tier 2. Right now they're just trying to get slammers out onto the map. I do like the Blue Hawk. I wonder if this is uh, intentional. Uh, Blue Hawks are generally better if you're not going against other bot players. Uh, otherwise you go into Gillies. But some players, they like getting a bunch of slammers out onto the map. And getting that one Blue Hawk will just kill those slammers. Because like uh, sometimes players just control out like... 10 slammers before they start going into just mass gillies and you can pick them off with a blue hawk but it's also good against uh, players that don't go into uh, bots if they go vehicles it's good to have the blue hawk on the map all right seeing the first uh, tier two engages here uh, one slammer killing that 
the other Slimer going through. Slimer's just hit so hard against uh, Tier 1. And I think they should probably transition into Drifters and a lot more Docks as well. Get Docks and Drifters to kind of anchor and DPS for your lines. Um, or you, you can even uh, forego Drifters and just go Mass Inferno's uh, Mass Anti-Air. I would recommend for uh, Sundance a lot more Anti-Air in his armies. Like, there is two in here, but... And uh, it does seem like Future Gnome, he was at, uh... Oh, I really gotta turn that sound back off uh, with the Slammers, but... Yeah, he was at 9 Bumblebees, but it seems like he lost uh, something somewhere. Nice AA placement there. Kind of covers that area. I wonder if it hits the mountain, though. That's, that's a question that I have. And it looks like both are starting to really creep on the center of the map. Uh, Future Gnome is securing more uh, forward positions. Neither of them is really taking this central location. There are a lot of mechs here. And you can even get Drifters and Locusts to come up through this uh, lava area and kill that. We also see Future Gnome uh, secure this area. One Drifter will kill that, but I don't think Sundance notices. Both of them are just so busy dealing with all these threats everywhere. Like a small threat here, a lot of fighting on the front line. Uh, more pushes on the side, air micro, just so many things to do, and you only have so much time. Oh, we see some air engagements here. Ants pushing forward, anchoring for this, no anti-air in it though. We do see he's taking up the this ramp as well. Eco is still dead even, and neither of them are opting for tier 2. I don't see, oh, we do see a tier 2 bot, but it is going forward. I think it's just rallied, he doesn't notice it. He's so focused on this air right now, and I don't blame him. This air can do a lot of damage. It's getting off uh, some of these forces, and it's paving the way for these ants to do the main amount of DPS. There is still this turret, though. So he can't push in that direction. Oh, we see massive air trade. Kills the bombers. I, for a moment, I thought Sundance was going to have it, but just a bit of mismanagement. And suddenly, Future takes it, and Future's at 11 bombers. He can definitely punish and save himself with that. He's got Locusts, though. He's got five Locusts. He can clear this up, but he, I think he's opting to just Locust the back of Sundance's base. Sundance doesn't really have defenses for it. I mean, sure, the Odd Ant and Striker can clean it up, but this could be a major play right now. However, Sundance is just completely wiping out the back of Future Gnome's base, and Future Gnome's got a lot of Boombots. Future, you're not out of this game. Don't go for snipes. You're doing fine. Just focus. Stay calm. You'll be okay. You can recover from this. Th this is a great play, but you can clean this up just fine. <laughs> Alright, scouts with that. Clears that up, clears that up. Good, good, good. Alright, keep going, keep going, keep going! Kill the base! Good. Micro. Alright, one goes down, another goes down. Mex. He's going through. Kills power. Kills fab. More power. It's not quite dead. But he's chunking up metal. He's now in the blue. Don't know if people know this, but when locusts attack, they give metal to you. They, they suck all the metal out of these buildings and give it to you directly. It's a very unique mechanic that only locusts have. We just see more engagements here. Gilly here anchoring. It, can, uh, it can't quite clean up two blue hawks unless he snipes them. So the, the, these shots are getting through. But now Sundance is transitioning into Tier 2 Eco. And what's Future Gnome's counter? Like, he didn't have to throw everything into these Locusts. These Locusts were great. Definitely great. But he could have used his air to clean this up. Alright, so he's using his air now. But the two spinners in the one location. Just stabilize, Future. You got this. You'll, you'll be fine. You got the army lead. You have a huge army lead. Actually, it's not that big. You have a lot of low-quality units, whereas uh, Sundance has a lot of high-quality units. But still, you have a similar army. Use it. <laughs> Alright, and he is, though. He's got his air. Cleaned up that side. This army here, though, gotta clean that up. Gotta watch that Sundance is taking 100 metal lead. Every time he uh, gains metal, it goes right into it. His efficiency is so low. But, oh, I don't know. Management of the this tier 2. I think you need to start um, spamming gillies now. When you're in these low amounts of units, like gillies just start to become this long lasting, efficient unit. Any units here, they could clean this up, but they're just so busy. There's just not enough time to do everything. Uh, 
Uh, future Gnome, I guess you could go for another uh, Locust Raid and get get uh, Metal back and just take it from uh, Sundance, but... Yeah, alright, and coming forward here, doesn't notice this Dancing Slammer. It doesn't fire when it's, like, dancing like that. It's a very odd quirk. Just units kind of going forward. Future Gnome needs to be efficient, but he just can't right now. He's being efficient over here, just gets a major victory over all these vehicles, easily killing them all with all these slammers here. Sundance is trying to get some forward positions. If uh, Future Gnome doesn't see this though, like he's not going to clean that up and uh, Sundance is just going to get that down, but hey, hold up a second. There's nothing in the back of the base. Everything's rallied forward. There's not enough fear, like the air is going to clean that up. This army could do some real damage. There's two spinners in it, so these three bombers aren't going to do too much damage. I mean, it could do a little bit of damage there. Bumblebees are hilarious that way. Yeah, it gets, gets some good kills. But resets the bomber count. And is starting to reset the fighter count as well. A little bit, just picking away at the side there. Because his own air is what's keeping him alive. There's one spinner, one stinger anchoring here. These eight bombers can clean this entire army up. But Future Gnome has no economy. All he has is armies. Sundance does see this massive threat coming in on the backside. And he's rallying everything uh, over there as well. And he's pushing forward, seeing if uh, Future Gnome's weak on that side. There's still just a bunch of boombots here that he hasn't used in a while. Ah, and the fighters are going down as well. But I don't know if he can use this air force. There's a lot of anti-air all over the map for Sundance. So, those eight out bombers, they just got their uh, numbers reset to one. Only one. But Future Gnome has really good tier two units, being very efficient with it. However, looks like the boombots didn't do their job. Slammers are pretty good against it. And this forward attack is dangerous. There's no anti-air in it, though. He can clean it up with some some air, but I don't think he cares about this at this point. He's looking for the snipe, and the commander is on the front line. There's nothing here protecting it. Does Sundance notice the boombots coming in? Does Future Gnome notice that this is open? He does. He, he scouted that out. He's going for it. Future's going for the snipe. He's coming in. Is there... What's the counter? Got the uh, uber cannon? He missed the uber cannon. He missed it. Sundance loses a 200 metal lead. No! Oh my. Oh, future with just the snipe. What a game. GG, my friends. Yeah, GG. Well played. Oh. Just like lots of wins and losses going all over the place. Future just being a little bit smarter with his army and then just finding that snipe. Like Sundance, like 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 I said early, it's good to put your commander on the front line, but eventually it's gonna be vulnerable. And it just so happened that all of his army was over here and his commander was right there. And Future just exploited that one key weakness and got in. What a match. Yeah, let's take a look at the Taiga versus... Yep, got that. Spectate. Alright, switching back to uh, game capture. I'm very sorry, guys. Oh, and let's turn them off that 8pm counter. We don't need that. Wait, Ferret's beating Nick? I mean, Kiwi? No way. Alright, let's take a look at this real quick. Okay, we're going to just stay in this game because they're both 400-400 eco lead. Like, eco. Armies are very similar. Zinc has uh, an advantage, though. Locus into the base... Commander is there, though, to shut it down. Gets a good uber cannon, so it doesn't do too much damage. And we got the massive force here. Bunch of tier 1. Tier 2 is usually better against this, but there's so much. Wait, Vanguard's into tier 1, though. That could be a difference maker. Taiga with big hits, but there's so much tier 1. Maybe they just pull through? Nope, they do not pull through. Onto the front side, we got an uber cannon coming in. I mean, a unit cannon coming in. Does he have the... Uh have umbrellas to defend against it. I don't think he does, 
I think he's going to get a snipe, but there's levelers here. If they're pointing in the right direction, they'll be fine. He's getting in the tier 3 turret. Uh, a very good uh, response, actually. There was an umbrella somewhere. I just couldn't see it. Maybe my icons are bad. I don't know. But anyway, back to this. Um, and there's an Ares on the map. What is this game? <laughs> Nuke? Unit cannons? Holy crap! Yeah, I see it now, Nick. I Sorry, I didn't see it in the chat. There was so much going on and so much to see. And Taiga has always been saying, get Arkids. They're just way better than Radar. And he is showing his knowledge of the meta right now using this Arkid to scout and to see for this Ares and keep it firing. Like... Taiga has gone on and on about how good the Arcid is as Radar and is just showing that case. And you know what? Zink has a counter to that, but he's just not using it. He's just going into a bunch of Logos. What is this game? <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I'm really glad we casted the Future Gnome versus Sundance game. We're getting a bunch of great matches here, and apparently Ferret is winning uh, against Kiwi, but... I was going to exit out of this match to go take a look at that, but I don't think I can right now. This is just a little bit too nuts. I mean, Taiga has the advantage. He's going to slowly whittle Zank down. Zank has to have a direct answer to that, but he does have some answers. He has other plays on the map. Coming in with this, there's a bunch of dots here, though. That's going to be able to counter that. Okay, Zank knows. Clips to the side. Gets into that tier 3. Oh, he kills all the fabs. Kills the tier 2 eco. Oh no! It's so surprising, making me cough! <laughs> ah. A catapult will clean them up, but they're just too slow. They, they fire too slowly. It's gonna kill the tier 2 fab? No! <laughs> the eco ratio is just not great. Sometimes Locust, when the when the metal for a building is really high, but their, their health is really low, it disproportionately makes Locusts do less damage. It's a very odd thing, and it also happens to tier 2 fabrics where they have very low health but very high metal mass because locusts do damage to the metal of a unit, not to the health of a unit. It's a very strange mechanic, even though it does health damage. Well, Zank got a lot of locust damage though. Did he reset his power? No, Taiga has way too much power. And now he's going to push in on that side. We got catapults defending here, so this tier 1 force is not going to do anything. I think Taiga is going to take it, and Zank is just looking for a way to get the wins. He's getting these, this damage, but he's got to kill the commander now. The Brel, Brel is there, uh, Turret is there to defend the commander. <coughs> and on a map like this, if you have two Ares, it's GG. You put one on this side, it covers everything. You put one on this side, it covers everything. Zank is going immediately forward. He's got a better army, but as soon as that Ares is up, Tier 2 vehicles do not do well into Ares. Even though the Ares has been nerfed and has less health, Zack can't get on top of the Ares. Oh, and there's actually a lot of levelers here. There's 10 levelers in here. There's uh, 10 levelers there. He's got... Oh, but that forward line. These levelers are defended. Like, you can easily trade that out. So, just easily uh, clears that army out because he's just got all that meat in front that tanks for these backward levelers. And easily takes that. More levelers coming. 16 levelers this time. And not as much meat. Uh, I don't know. Zeng, he's got 400 metal. You can always do strategies with 400 metal. There's always something you can do. At that amount of eco. But I think Taika is taking the strategic victory here. And this forward force is going to get cleaned up. Like you don't have any more meat on these levelers anymore. It's just bones. The bones hit hard. They actually like very strong very dense but as soon as you cut right into them they just break and shatter more locusts coming in I mean they've been working before but Taiga's onto it <laughs> he, he, he's gotten a lot of turrets here <laughs> covering every single lane I don't think uh I don't know Z Zinc always finds a way and he's just sees the most the tiniest of exploits just the absolute tiniest knows about this oh he's going for the Ah, uh, but it's anti-nukes. They don't cost a lot of metal. It's the 
The anti-nuke missiles themselves cost a ton, but the missile launcher, launcher itself does not. That's why it doesn't do that much damage against it. Yeah, we can definitely throw... Okay, the Kiwi versus Ferret game is going either way. It's insane. I'll join that as soon as possible, but I gotta finish this game out. There's a nuke on. He's gonna try and snipe this anti-nuke. He knows it's there. Zank has a win condition. He knows about the anti-nuke. He needs a different form to get that. He should also clear up this Arcid so that that the Ares doesn't do damage. The Ares is getting closer and closer, and there's another one on the other side. Still, Zank does have a win condition, and Zank is smart enough to know about his win condition. Nope. He, he knows that it just isn't enough. And he does it the proper style. He nukes himself. That's how you go out of the game. You do it in style. You don't just delete. You nuke yourself. Big GG's to Zach. Alright, let's head over to the Ferret versus Kiwi game. Apparently Ferret is taking on Kiwi directly. It could go either way. That's what Nick is reporting. <laughs> this, this second round is fire! <laughs> okay, Kiwi Ferret game is one for the ages. Okay, Nick's hyping me up. It better not suck. You better not be like, oh, it's 500 metal lead. He's easily winning. Okay, 300 versus 250. Uh, Kiwi's down on, on metal. And he's down on army as well. Uh, metal cost as well. But Kiwi's very strategic in these late games. Kiwi, this is his strongest point. Like, a filled up map with lots of fabbers, <laughs> lots of things to play with. Kiwi is so strong on these points. Uh, we we see no tier 2 vehicle. Oh, tier 2 vehicle is dead on Ferret's side. And he's going to be pushing in over here. And I have no time to change the sound bite for the uh, <laughs> slammers. I got to move. And we see, um, we see tier two air. Oh, Kiwi's getting uh, teleporter down. He's gonna push everything into there. Metric ton of levelers. A storm slammer. Only one gilly though. That's not gonna cover these two horns. But dude, does he have enough time to use these two horns? Fair, I have enough time. And there's vanguards in it, so he doesn't have radar. He has to get direct vision. He's not firing with these hornets. They need to fire, but he can't. He's microwing backwards. Oh no, I think... Alright. Tier 3 turrets going down. <laughs> We've seen their power. But that's a lot of levelers. Levelers do deal with them. Three of them though. Third one's going down. Uh, damage going on to the commander though. Fourth one down. And now they're really starting to shred into this army. I don't think they can reach this guy. They got a few leveler shots. So it's going down to 76%. But I think Ferret's going to clean that up. So much damage. The tier 2 turrets, the, the levelers and bad guards are enraged. They are killing the turrets, but the hornets are above, <laughs> and they're going to kill those too. I think Ferret's going to clean it up, but oh, his commander is hurt. Very hurt. He does, uh, Kiwi, did he notice the uh, missile launcher? It's nearly done. Does he have an anti-nuke for himself? No, he does not. And Ferret's coming in on the backside to bitch slap Kiwi. For getting in his face. I think that was Kiwi's last uh, result there. It was so close to getting something done, but I don't know. Like, Kiwi needed to throw everything in there. It was a good call, but now Ferret's gonna punish him for it. What a good defense from Ferret, though. He, his commander could have died <laughs> so badly, but I mean, Kiwi's gonna stay into this. He's got 400 metal. Uh, I, I see this always. 400 metal is enough to do tactics for you. And these levelers, there's no vehicles in here. He's going to be super efficient killing these slammers with the levelers, and does so. Uh, do we have any uh, sheller shots coming in? We do have sheller shots coming in. However, now Ferret is going to be utilizing his tier 2 advantage. He's going for the commander. Hitting straight onto it. Kiwi's going forward. Is he going to try and get into the anti-air? No. Gillies? Does he have Gillies? No. He's dying. He's going down. There's no counter for it. There's a nuke follow-up as well. And Kiwi is dead. Okay, well. I think we, like, must have <laughs> happened. Yeah, it must, yeah, it must be recast because I saw a tier 2 dead and everything. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely throw this one to Marshall for sure. Holy crap. <laughs>
I'm so sad that I got to the tail end, but I was really happy with the future gnome versus Sundance game too. That was a good game. A very nice gold versus gold matchup. Definitely not as intense as this one. Not as crazy, but it was a good gold versus gold. All right, I think we're down. <laughs> what a start to the tournament. All right, here we go. Let's start the game. Zoto versus Millen, bronze match of the century on naval. Let's see how these uh, players do naval. I'm so curious. This will be a different kind of match for sure. This isn't like your high octane Kiwi versus Ferret. Levelers in your freaking face, no. This is, we're building 15 fabs at the very start. <laughs> this is, it is good to spam a line of turrets directly around your commander. This is the bronze match. But is Millen actually that bad? I haven't seen him. I've just, I've, I've never seen Millen play and I have not seen Zoto play either. So I don't know how close these two are in skill. But I think we're gonna find that out here. If there's one that will overwhelm the other or if they both have just very weird, unique tactics that line up with each other. So air opening, this is very common. This is the most common opener in bronze this is quintessential bronze this is how bronze is played you open air bot no yeah yeah bot first on a naval map this is quintessential bronze already we are getting daring builds from these two players we got bot first and air first on a naval map who will win <laughs> okay at least both are building fabs everybody knows to build fabs like I've never seen players not build fabs from their first factory. Alright, naval second. A bit standardish, I don't like that. Whereas, uh, whereas Zoto is going into energy. Actually, if you are to go air first, it can work. It can work. It's just usually not how it goes. Um, it requires like two or three energy plants at the start to support your air fabs. Because your air fabs drain a lot of energy. And they're actually, their uptime is really good. They they're constantly building something because when they're not they they fly between points so quickly that their their uptime is just so good compared to bots and especially vehicles so we got four bots here he didn't finish the mechs he didn't notice that the mechs was finished but that's okay he's got some backup fabs he, he even though that's 34 that's 30 percent efficiency this is perfectly fine completely fine uh, let, let's see who will get the first combat unit out all right submarine two minutes into the game we got a submarine out uh, but I don't know he's kind of a noob um, <laughs> I've never I never build naval I have no idea what I'm building that is fine <laughs> that is completely fine <laughs> that is why we have this match here today to learn we are here as learners. These bronze players are the masters of bronze tier naval play. And everybody else in the chat is brand new. Okay, well, we do see going into air. I don't think he's going to build fighters, though. I'd be very surprised if he built fighters. And I seriously doubt um, he would build fighters. Actually, Zoto is doing it properly. I told Zoto a little while ago just to build five fabs at the start. Then you start building more fabs, but you can only afford five. And Zoto is doing that perfectly fine. Where's Millen? Well, he's up to eight fabs now. Constantly fabs. He's getting an army on here. He's getting a teleporter down. I Oh, interesting. I think he wants to put like teleporters on these islands and take them or get a teleporter here and take that down. Although. Zoto's not really built up on this. Just got the three mechs. That's fine. But yeah, that's the strategy we have today. Teleporter bot placement. They're both even on eco. We're four minutes into the game. Usually, Ubers are at 200 <laughs> metal at this point. But they're both like similar power amount. Like sometimes bronzes just completely forget to build power. But no, these two, they, they got power lined up. I mean... They, they also got defenses lined up in the base. How many defenses we got? One torpedo defense directly in the base. That's pretty low. 
And Zotos also just got like two in the base, one anti-air. Well, anti-air is fine. I don't count anti-air. It's completely fine. As long as it's not right next to the commander, the A is not right next to the commander, that's completely fine. And now we're going to see the strongest strategy in the game. Blind World Patrol build mechs. Actually, no. It's not blind. Just went straight over here, building a bunch of defenses and a pelter right in the center. I actually quite like that. Uh, you don't build the pelter here. It's not going to hit any of the water, but... May as well. Why not? <laughs> Why the hell not? I like the queue up too, actually. Just takes takes a nice 40 metal lead just simply because sent all these fabs randomly over there. However, our first aggressive motion. Piranhas in the middle of the map. And a Barracuda. We got five combat units in a forward position. Five minutes into the game. Oh, these These two are really even with each other. Okay. Teleporter down over here. I think I think that's a Millen's strategy. It's just going to slowly creep onto these islands and take these locations. N no air fabs from him. That's okay. He's got some naval fabs. Not using them right now, but you only need to use your naval fab like once every two minutes. And you will be very fine with that. More air factories. Not, not using any air army, but that's okay. Not like uh, Millen's building any air anyway. Oh, he's got some scouts, got some air fabs. Yeah, fighters. Our first fighter of the game. Oh, there are fighters over here. He, he's scouting around. So, Millen has the scout advantage and can potentially do damage. But he's not going to see it. He, he, he's looking for her, for Zoto. Like, Zoto doesn't really know what Millen's doing, but Millen has a better idea. But Millen has the eco disadvantage at 72%. That's actually pretty good. Going into tier 2 uh, bot, I respect that. Knows to put slammers and locusts into the water. Or perhaps blue hawks and gillies instead. Because that's always a possibility with these players. Anything is possible. It's always the one that you least expect. Alright, just building more mechs around. Pretty good. Going into tier 2 air. Also fine. Oh, I am, Guys, I am in love. Yeah, I love this play too. Like, I love it. Just getting the docks, the, the bot factory, I mean, the, the teleporter down, getting the uh, fabbers to build all this metal here. I like that play. Um, probably won't be able to secure it against this forward pelter and all these air, anti air, really kind of covering this area. We got some, uh, some of uh, Millen's uh, forces in the front here. Our army size is. Um, heavily favoring, favoring Millen, but that's kind of deceptive. Because a lot of that army is into this patrol um, stingers and docks. Like, the uh, metal count is actually favoring Zoto. Like, Zoto just has a much more um, expensive, higher quality army. Whereas Millen has a much bigger, uh, lower quality army. Alright, now he's taking the, uh, taking the metal here. He's catching up on the metal. Because we see, um, we see Soto lo locking down this area. Oh, our first, first blood of the day. And they trade. Millen comes out on top. Is this an omen? I'm not sure. Or is this just a lucky first fight? And will Zoto come in and slap him around? I don't know. But we got some actual forward positioning here, like securing this mech. It's not too bad. Could bomb it or something, but who knows. Uh, finishing off the metal here. Okay, so he did queue up one uh, anti-air anti -air here, one anti-air there, so he's locking down that island. Pretty decent. Uh, the tier 2, both of them, it's taken them a while. They both only have uh, three fabs on it. Both of them, three fabs, actually. Yeah, air fabs are a little bit uh, faster. And now Zoto's finally putting a fourth on it. We'll finish it a little bit sooner. Could put the commander on it too. Actually is doing it. See, these bronzes are brilliant. Wait, where is this? Yep, bronzes are brilliant, guys. Why do you guys doubt bronzes? I love bronzes. They they know. They, they have the tactics. They, they, they just require a little bit more time to do it. But they know. They got the tactics. We We do see a huge line here. Uh, Millen's just going straight for this area. Like, he could have gone here. That's the safe. This is the danger zone. But why go safe 
Why go danger when you could go into the middle and get randomly shot at by a pelter that can barely touch the water at all? All right, we see a bombing run here. Nearly kills the teleporter, but loses all uh, all of Zoto's force by these stingers. However, Zoto's coming in from the side, sneaking those fabs in, building some turrets down. That's actually pretty pretty interesting. A anti air turret. We're gonna see this anti air turret going down. We're seeing uh, air fab wars going on. Obviously, going for a little bit of eagle there, and drifts forward, and gets that all shot down. We do see that some fighters picked off two of these, though. So, very interesting trade. Still has this over here. Don't know if they can kill the turret properly. You can spread your eight docks and kill it, but that's a very, like, difficult thing to do. Even, like, I wouldn't see plats or ubers really kill this turret. It is killable by eight docks, but you have to spread them out and hit so that the turret is constantly rotating. Alright, what's our tier two like? We see a tier two fab from Zoto. And air too, that, that's actually really efficient on this map. I actually would go tier 2 fab, honestly, at this point, because you're you're getting land, got these islands, got everything. It can just move around pretty safely for you. What's um what's Millen gonna open up with? Is it gonna go tier 2 fab? I doubt it. I feel like what's the first unit? I think a slammer, honestly. Could be a tier 2 fab, but my money is on a slammer. It could also be a blue hawk randomly. Alright, we're just about come on, finish it up. Alright, we see some real big engagements, though. I think uh, Millen might be distracted by that. Alright, tier 2 fab. Down for Millen. Millen uh, just lost the, out this fight. Yeah, <laughs> Zordo didn't, doesn't know naval. Just build a bit of everything, and you're fine. You're fine. Okay. What does Millen have to defend? He's got the Eco League, but isn't using it, and Zoto has a, just an actual army in the face. Trying to get up defenses, but I don't think that'll work. Torpedoes aren't... They're good against subs, and they're decent against narwhals, but orcas just do well against them. I think... Well, this one commander actually can clear them up. As long as it's underwater. It's only going to kill three narwhals, two subs, but has to target them. I don't think Millen knows can't move it out of water. You cannot get that into shallows or the commander will die. However, I think the commander is going to go into shallows. Drifter's coming forward. Yep, Orca's shots are coming in. Oh no. Millen, you moved in shallows. Wait, is it going to go back down? Randomly go back down? No. No, it's going closer to the land. Just get into the water. Millen, get into the water. Oh no. No, you're going to lose because of this. You, you're building a second tier 2 fab. You were so beautiful. Oh no! Ubergen and misses! <laughs> Ubergen is terrible! Wait! Zoda's not seeing it! Is it underwater? No, it's just targeting the power now! Could have won the game, but. It's just targeting down the power! You could have won! Wait, is is he underwater? I I genuinely can't tell. Uber cannons are just terrible on water, though. <laughs> it swung on the rim and missed. Oh! Uh, it's, it's, it's so beautiful! Alright, what's the recovery plan? We got Blue Hawks coming in. We got tier 2 fabs. We got some uh, eco secured over here by these two fabs. What is the recovery plan? Alright, tier 2 fabs going down, building tier 2 eco. That's gonna actually push uh, Zoto into prominence here. Uh, trying to use the air, but we do actually see a pretty good amount of defenses. Does kill the one mechs that is uh, vulnerable. This one just randomly gets in. Uh, but Millen doesn't have an actual force to fight with. That's what I'm worried about. I feel like, and Zoto's using all of Zoto's economy right now. Like, it's just properly spending. Like, there, there's no power, obviously. Like, they always forget to build power, but still, like, okay, power is going down. Zoto is actually pretty good. Pretty good for a bronze. <laughs> Millen, Millen's trying, but I think also Millen's just confused by naval maps. Millen might actually be better than Zoto on a land map, but on a naval map, I don't know. Zoto just had had the air advantage. Millen tried to take everything, only had a few air fabs, whereas Millen had a, was all air fabs. And I mean, fighters aren't going to stop that. Fighters are not going to stop air fabs in bronze level game. What is this? You think they're going to build fighters and 
properly uh, kill Fabs with it. No. <laughs> that's not happening. Alright, we got a bunch of uh, hovering uh, units over here. They're trying to kill this turret, but that's not going to work out. What? What is uh, Millen's gameplay? Colonel Grizzly would approve. Grizzly loves you, man. I repeat, why am I not dead? I cannot... I forgot to turn spectator chat off. <laughs> but, yeah, Millen has another force coming forward. There are the torpedoes so far. Yep, yeah, uh, some friendly little chats trying to figure out the game. They're both in this together. They're both learning. They're not using advantages just to kill their opponent. They're both in it to learn together. That is the most beautiful thing about bronze players. Everybody else just wants to murder each other. But here, right in the middle of a match, intense game of epic proportions, we see some learning going on. Alright, nuke going down though. 300 metal, you can actually support that. As the eco for it. It's not in the red right now. I think we'll probably power out, but pretty decent. Like, how much storage do you have? Usually, one each. That's actually very good. Usually you see like 10 storage of one type. And no eco whatsoever, but yeah, I think Z Zoto's just just got a little bit better uh, macro, even though I liked Millen's tactics. They were a lot of fun. I think the macro was just just a bit better on Zoda's time. Side. And we see the GG there. What a fun match. I'm so happy. Alright. Well. We press on. Okay. 145 versus 145. Army is identical. Oh, but Taika has a massive quality lead. Okay, got two Leviathans. They're getting killed off um, by subs. Does Soldier have a tier 2? Yeah, he does have tier 2. There's a massive force coming over here, but they're all Stingrays. Can push it down. They can push this down. Um, the Leviathan doesn't notice. Again, Taiga with the tactics of radar is good. Kills two Leviathans for free, though. Um, soldier coming in. Pretty, pretty low eco game. Kind of have to really play with what you got there. Oh, two Leviathans. They can definitely clean this up, but they're getting blocked by their own rubble. And they need... Okay, so is he kiting backwards? The turrets are constantly moving. However, massive shots into here. Gonna kill all that tier 2. And can kill off the narwhals. The subs, they can come in though. They're killing the torpedo launchers, so the subs can come in and clean up. The commander can defend, but I don't think that can work out properly. Stingrays though going down is a big deal. And that's four of them. Four Stingrays. Just dead like that. Okay, so is he going to bring the commander forward and save it? I don't think so. Loses the tier 2. And he's going to lose these Leviathans soon enough. Ron is killing that side. But subs can't kill him. The soldier's got a lot, a lot of needles in Taiga's face, but... Yeah, okay. Brings the commander forward. I think he's going to save one Leviathan. going to lose the other. That's... That's just how it is. But still has a Leviathan up, gonna save the tier 2 eco. I mean, this tier 2 structure. Alright, <laughs> defense turret. Oh man, that's gonna take a while. Yeah, we'll get these uh, proxy uh, vehicle factories. The uh, bot factory up here, just to secure that. Not too bad. Soldier's not too far behind, but I don't know, like. Taiga just has more of the map and has a tier 2 um, naval lead. Has a Typhoon over here. Stingray as well. A Leviathan can kill it. Krakens too. Um, if you play it right, but... Yeah, I don't know. You either get your own Leviathans and Stingrays or... To, to face that, otherwise they kill everything. Uh, tier 2 Torpedo Launcher. A lot of damage in the back of the base. Okay, and we see the uh, the Typhoon revealed. Soldier does have a really good Air Force right now. I don't see an Air Force from Taiga. So, it won't be efficient, but 
he does have a way to deal with these drones. A lot of piranha spam too. Um, actually pretty good. Like, soldiers only getting up submarines. Got a few orcas over here, but piranhas can definitely overwhelm orcas when there's a lot of them. And, uh, Taiga's just kind of hitting across the map, killing what he can. And just more submarines everywhere. Like, Soldier just doesn't have forces to deal with all this. He needs a lot of tools to deal with a lot of things. Atlas Lord is leading? Atlas Lord might win this? Going to with a wax strat? No way? Is Kiwi just washed up? <laughs> oh no! Kiwi, he might not make it to the finals. I mean, we'll, we'll be doing a top 8 finals, but he might not make it. What in the world is going on today? Ah, oh, crap. I really need a poop, too. So, here's what I'll do. I'll put a camera here. Put a... Uh, put my... Put my camera here. And you guys can just watch nice and passive with this nice calming music. Be right back. Ah, came back. Looks like soldier's dead. Okay. What happened here? Yeah, the piranha spam. Leviathan got taken out by subs. Just too many tools lost. Torpedo on the hill right there. Nice placement. And... Yeah, that's a GG. Okay. 27 min minute match is not bad. Okay. For, uh, Kiwi versus Nick on a really crazy 1v1 map. Quality is online in PA. <laughs> um, yeah, quality is fine. I think it was Dr. MD that we were concerned about, but he was there. Oh. Holy crap. Okay. Got air fabs. Kiwi going with a pretty aggressive play. Nick doing a standard uh, vehicle opening on the start. And... Yeah, this is a kind of a trick. Oh, sees him too. No, he doesn't see him. Does not notice. Wait, does he? 
Yeah, he saw him. That's really weird. Okay. Well, there goes a little... <laughs> Dot. <laughs> Kiwi not clearly not happy about that, but Nick is uh, definitely trailing Eco right now. Needs to spend. Getting a factory up, so it's not too bad. Alright, there's a trademark Nick push with a lot more army than you expect at the front, and you just don't have enough in that position. A little bit of a turret down there. Kiwi thinks that's uh, acceptable enough to deal with it. Uh, Kiwi's caught back up on expansions. He's being very efficient with his eco. Um, Nick has uh, another factory down, but... He's got a lot of power too. I don't know, Nick's been weird with his eco, but his army's there. And he's gonna start taking these aggressive positions for sure. Kiwi playing with a few strikers on the sides. And we'll see what their uh, tier 2 timing is. Nick t generally tends to go tier 2 early. Kiwi tends to hit it, but play with his tier 2 a little bit more interestingly. Alright, strikers there. See if they trade properly. That's one for one. Eh, it's good enough. Those two sparks will be cleaned up by the ants really easily. And yeah, they're just dead even on expansions. Um, this little position right here, very smart placement. Gets the uh, point defense. Keeps those away. Uh, Nick, he, he's going to just take this forward position though. Pretty aggressive. Very hard to dislodge once you start uh, building up there and I think Nick is definitely going to compound that. Taking the central platform as well. Uh, Kiwi's just taking the sides, but is kind of growing very organically across the map, whereas Nick is just taking key points on the map. We got a nice smooth spread everywhere. A bit of an um, airplay right now. Uh, Kiwi does have the air advantage, can use this bomber to clean up uh, some of these expanding fabs. But will he know to utilize it? He's not really moving around. Gets a nice trade there, gets two fighters for one fighter. Massive push in here as well. Nick always just seems to have just a bunch of bots, like way more than what a raiding force should have at a state of game and just hit it at that point. And uh, Kiwi can't really push this forward position. There's two turrets, not enough vehicles. There's just enough stingers in there just to hold this back as well. Might do a lot of damage now. Th this is broken through. There's a lot of vulnerable areas that he can hit. And now he's pushing on this part too with a ton of units. Just streaming in. Everything's forward. If Kiwi can find the counterattacks, he can do a lot of damage over here. But I don't know if that'll be the case, so. Alright, he's gonna feel pretty desperate, bring in the Bumblebee, and it gets to the three stingers, so it can probably clean it up. The tier two is going down for him, tier two is going down for Nick as well. Just needs this counter rating. It's very hard to find this counter rating when you have so many forces just hitting in the front of your face. And this isn't doing anything here. He can bring that over to the side and just start killing there. But he's going to feel de desperate as this army is connecting with each other and just really shattering Kiwi's backside. Uh, Kiwi's got an army here, but he's not using it. When you're at this level of play, you really got to be active with all your forces. They have to be constantly doing something. And he, he's not really locking down anything here. He's got a Pelter there. Uh, the Pelter's not even in a position forward enough to start uh, hitting on these. And now, now Kiwi's got an army just up here. In a very problematic location. It's going to stop a little bit of expansion, but really he should... Like, the... Nick is double Kiwi's eco. Eight minutes into the game. Never a good sign to see. 
Yeah, Kiwi does have an army lead slightly, so... He's got an army, he just needs to be... to use it. Or else, um... Nick is going to spiral it out of control, and Nick is going into tier 2 eco as well, right away, whereas uh, Kiwi is forced into uh, tier 2 bots to clean all of this up. However, uh, if Nick loses all this army, Kiwi can just shatter this backline, flood it, kill it, before um, Nick can get this eco going, but Kiwi is definitely on the back foot here. He does definitely has to play up from behind. Clean this out really efficiently with these three slammers, though. Um, I believe Nick actually notices that he's retreating to these back lines. He's going to get some uh, turrets and forward placements up. And now Kiwi is coming in. He's finally using this army. And he's going to clean up this central location really efficiently. We're going to see a bit of a um, back slap for Kiwi. He is not going into tier 2 eco at the moment. Feels the need to uh, stay on his tier 1. And now we're seeing Nick's tier 1 forces come out, and they're pretty much even with Kiwi. Like, uh, Kiwi just doesn't have a lot of forces out. And I feel like Kiwi's going to be forced to keep uh, building more tier 1. He's getting his tier 2 eco out now, but Nick, he's already got one of his tier 2 mechs done, and he's going on to his second now. Uh, Brutal Trades, the uh, Inferno tanks a lot of those shots, so those slammers get in free. Uh, we do see some uh, bumblebees there, so we'll see if that clears it up. Uh, the force here was good. It can push in to uh, catch these areas. Uh, Kiwi's got... A, he can do a lot of damage on the back side. And Nick is kind of trailing a little bit of... Eco. It says there's a little bit of UI lag. Okay. Um, and Kiwi, he's got... Blue Hawks here, so Pelters they do outrange Blue Hawks, but Pelters are notoriously difficult to um, get properly. There are two of them though. You just pop the Blue Hawks forward just into range, quickly kill the Pelters, pull back, and then you can do that. But it requires a lot of micro to pull off, a lot of attention to do. And Nick, he's going to be forcing a lot of attention away from that point. Now, Nick, he he could just uh, take this uh, army here pushing over here. Um, he's got a lot of single point defense turrets, which are good against strikers and sparks as long as they don't go, get on top of them. But it's still kind of a fragile area. He can secure this location. He's immediately locking that down. Uh, his, his tier 2 is going down immediately. He's actually getting some power right now. And Nick, he's getting a lot of metal, but there's no power behind it. So he might actually get into an accidental deadlock on his eco. Um, army advantage is barely Nyx. It's, it's a little bit of an advantage, but not too much. And if Kiwi properly uh, controls this location here, uh, there's no anti-air around. The closest anti-air is over here and the commander over here. So this entire area is kind of very fresh and open for these Novo Bees. The only way that Nick can save them is by the ghillies hitting Nova Bumblebees, and that's not always guaranteed. Lol, if you select unit, it appears in the middle of the right side of the screen. Yeah, I have a mod that puts them over here instead of um, down in the corner. This makes it a little bit more useful to know what I'm looking at. Wait, do you have that Potas here? Because I had to mod that in my, myself. I haven't published that mod or anything. I just um, did it myself. All right, well, one Bumblebee down. Kills the Gilly, though. Oh, goes straight for the Fabs, though. Kills them, loses the Bumblebee, but does kill the Fabs and loses the Radar, which is nice. Um, Kiwi's going to have a lot of uh, orders commanded up, so I didn't notice those uh, Air Fabs. But yeah, he's trying to secure... Uh, that location and he's just trying to gobble up eco he really needs his economy back into order he's getting locusts but i don't know where they can do damage like this is a very choke pointy map and uh, we we got blue hawks here are they in range yeah they're in range okay blue uh pelters notoriously can't hit spreads them out so even if he loses one 
doesn't lose it. He needs to shoot this other one, though. Does he see it? I I don't think he sees it and might run into it. Blue Hawks have bad vision. Oh, I think he, he sees it now. Oh, loses the, the Blue Hawk, but he can clean this all up now that there's no Pelters there. There is a bunch of Gillies on this side, though. And then just more forces coming down. Uh, force of with tier two units, some slammers. That can definitely kill this army here. There's very few ants. There's a lot of sparks. Sparks are very bad against slammers compared to ants. Ants can at least try to trade. We got locusts here, but where, where are they going to go? Are they going to go down this way into a bunch of docks? Are they going to go this way? Yeah, they actually could go this way and get right in. There, there's this little sneaky ramp that nobody cares about. That is a solution. All right, we got a lot of forces here and a little bit dead. And the game is moving so fast, I can hardly keep up. So many uh, different uh, points going on. Losing all of his air, too. He can't afford to lose his air. I, in fact, where is uh, Nick's air? Oh, Nick just lost a lot of his air, too. But was killing up some uh, fabs. All right, so we got a big dangerous force. And we got fabs on the front line. Just, It's always a bad feeling when someone's building mechs on your side of the, the place. It's just like... They're so, they feel so deep into it. All right, this force here, cleaning up this. This will be nice. Although Nick, he's not struggling with metal right now. So any metal rating does not matter. It's it's the energy that Nick needs to recover on. And he's going into tier two uh, factory. Is he building any? All right, so we got some locusts. They did that. There's some ants on the side. He needs to control this. Come through. Oh, he is coming through. Uh, is going to get just a nice little pickup. He's getting a lot of metal, so locusts, they consume metal. They don't steal it. Like, your opponent doesn't lose the metal when locusts attack you, but you gain metal when they are attacking. So he's going to get a little bit of metal, and that, that was probably worth it. Uh, but it's just a little bit. He needs a lot of advantages to get back into the game, not just a few. He is creating advantages, though. Even though this is on... This is going to kill a lot of this... He's got his own raiding forces on the backside. They can kill all these factories as well. And all these forces. There's there's a couple of slammers in there that could clean it up if Kiwi doesn't control. There's no tier 2 in this one. It's all into this army over here. And the radar's up, so he does see this. And Kiwi's eco is pretty solid, whereas Nick, he's just hemorrhaging a lot of metal. I mean, did Kiwi uh, build some storage? Yeah, he built a storage. Did Nick build a storage? No, he did not. And he's just losing a lot of that metal that he should have a lead on. Now, Nick, he does have an army advantage. That is something. It's not too big. He likes putting it a lot in docks, whereas uh, Kiwi has it in Infernos. All right, first real trade of the game. Big win for uh, Kiwi on this side. Gets some important energy that Nick can't afford to lose. Why is there energy plants so close to Kiwi's base? That is just such an odd thing. He felt like he needed to build energy in. Babs there, so it's like, okay, we'll put him there, right there, but <laughs> you're going to lose that. And now you're starting to really see Kiwi's macro come into play. Kiwi is really strong at this positional play where there's just forces moving across the map like like a chessboard. Now, Nick, he, he's got a freaking rook in the back of, uh, of Kiwi's line here, but uh, Kiwi's going to backhand him with a queen real soon here. But we do have a major force coming over here at the moment, and these are vehicles. And vehicles, if you have a lot of ghillies and a lot of docks in front, you can't touch the levelers. You have to have a lot of um, either ghillie spam in order to clean it up, or uh, blue hawks, which he can't do. And he doesn't have enough ghillies to quickly clean that up. Like That's going to come in and do damage now. Uh, what is the response? You can build a uh, tier... Tier 3 turrets. Tier 3 turrets can do it. There's only uh, 4 levelers in here. And like three, uh, like a bunch of Tier 3 turrets can do the job. But this is really dangerous. Okay, Kiwi does notice he's pulling back his fab. That's really critical. And he does have a vehicle factory down. I don't think they'll go into air. In fact, um, Nick is into multiple Tier 2 uh, factories. But he needs to stop this position. I don't care what's going on the rest of the map. This is the most critical moment. We got a lot of slammers coming in. The levelers aren't shooting. They, they keep moving on their turrets. Okay, now they're firing. They're doing a lot of damage. But all that meat that was on the front line just got wrecked by the slammers. This was really important 
uh, win by Kiwi. I mean, he uses, loses a lot of army, but that push could have been devastating. Could have really killed a lot of the base. And now, uh, now we go back to the rest of the map. Okay, so uh, Kiwi, Nick is pushing in on this line. No anti-air, but still pretty scary for ground force. Positions here, positions there. Uh, Nick does clear up this pretty important uh, metal location. But we have Kiwi, for the first time, taking a metal lead in this map. Now, is he going to take an army lead? Because uh, Nick has two tier two factories, um, vehicle factories. And he's just rallying, like, he's so good at bringing just such a massive force into these locations. But he doesn't do it all, where he just has a little bit of everything else in just a few other locations. It becomes so problematic. Alright, bombers over here. There is one spinner in that force, though. Uh, Nick does not have air, anti-air, in this force here. Kiwi's got five bombers. If Kiwi recognizes that that Nick has no air here, he, he's only got two fighters. Kiwi just needs to get his bombers out immediately. I would control group, like, a full set of bombers. He can wipe this out. There's only three spinners in there. There's some fabrics for it. You can build some galettas to really uh, secure that, but I don't know about that. I don't know about that, buddy. All right, we got some shellers. Yeah, we got some shellers out. They can get hit by these very efficient uh, gillies. Like, shellers are kind of inefficient, but they can get damage done. But these gillies on the back line are really placed well. Uh, they're both at 400 metal now. Kind of an intense match. You really should just be using these bombers. There's only uh, two anti-air in here. Like, Kiwi's got to use his air. Um, Nick, he's pushing in on this front line, and that's... There's pelters, there's uh, shellers. That actually may be holdable. There's, uh, there's no vanguard in there. Actually, there is a vanguard, so he's got jamming as well. So I don't think uh, Nick knows just how, how strong that position is. All right, we see ants pushing into here. I think they will clean up that location. And it looks like uh, Nick actually does see it. He's going to sideswipe and go in, onto the back over here. But he's taking so many hits from these uh, sheller shots. He is giving some shots of his own, though. Like, it's, it's not all uh, fun games. Oh, Kiwi recognizes it. Kills these, uh, kills these shell shellers on the back line. So many bombers. Oh, my. Oh, ho, ho. Look at the damage! There's enough anti-air in here, though, that it does whittle down the Bumblebee force, but I think that's enough. Is it enough? No, there's five levelers, one vanguard, so he is going to push into here, and he can punch up there with that strong vehicle force. Uh, Kiwi's back on the back foot again with 100 metal disadvantage, and Nick just always has way more army. Like, just randomly has 100 more army than you do. Kiwi is pushing forward. He... He does recognize that Nick is pushing into this side, so he's going to take an advantage and push straight forward. Um, levelers, gillies, no shellers in it, so it's a punching force rather than a shelling force. Uh, let's see if he can clean this off. He's definitely expanding across to get this tier 2. I think there needs to be some dedicated uh, rating because both of them are really advanced with their tier 2 uh, eco now. We got 19 mexes for Nick on his side. And and 13 for Kiwi. But this is all this all feels really safe. This feels like in the center of Nick's uh, side of the map. I think there needs to be also some reclaim going on, like some World Patrol reclaiming, in order to uh, get something going back for him. Now, uh, Nick, he's a bit stalling on energy as well, so that's a bit important. Doesn't have the radar, and we got some slammers going around and this air force here that's that's a real linchpin here going on uh nick's going into tier two uh air but you do need some tier one forces to go in and you know what he's going to do he recognizes that he doesn't have an air advantage he's going to spam out a bunch of anti-air but kiwi has enough forces to deal with this regular so this massive army all these things that really um really has been hurting uh kiwi is going to be cleaned up now. Still, he's taking a lot of damage. He's He's got a 200 metal disadvantage, but 
the ratios at this point, once you're above 400 metal, those ratios start to matter less and less. And it's more about the tactics and the trades that you have. Like this trade here, Kiwi's nearly caught up on, ar uh, on army for the first time. If you use your uh, forces better, it doesn't matter if they have a 200 metal lead. You'll just straight kill them. But <laughs> here's what matters. Another massive force coming in the front here. Uh, Kiwi does have a, a sizable enough force. Like, you can hold this choke point here. Like, this map is pretty choke pointy. But another force here, like, not as big, but has enough tier 2 units in it to really hurt. Like, you have to have a dedicated response to each of these things. And does he have a dedicated response? I don't know. But here's something that he does have. He's going after the tier 2 eco line. And that could, for first time, really hurt Nick's advantage. Alright, so we got our first force here. Uh, Kiwi, he's targeting down these levelers. Levelers trades. Nice shot on the ghillies here. But um, just punching forward with all this uh, trash here and levelers. Like, levelers are getting the damage in while ants soak all the shots. And also over here as well, like, Nick is punching in on two key locations. Now, <laughs> Kiwi has a massive air force. In fact, he could even go for a snipe at this point. This is so massive. But he needs to utilize it over here. Like, there's not enough anti-air. There's seven and stuff, but when you're at this many bumblebees? Oh, I think, I think Kiwi's just going to go for a snipe. Oh! But he lost all his air. He's only got Bumblebee. He just lost his main advantage because of this tier 2 air force. He didn't have enough fighters to cover for it. And Kiwi calls the GG at that moment. <laughs> what a pretty intense game. Just a lot of macro, a lot of aggression. Yeah, it's all over the place. And uh, Kiwi calls it off. I think actually Kiwi overbuilt on fabs. Like, why are there so many fabs when you don't have the eco to support that many fabs? Indeed, it more enforces. I think, um... Alright, well, that's it. The end of that match. Uh, pretty solid 23 three minute game. Tournament match, for sure. Alright, starting in the south on the green. Going with an Icarus play at the very start, but it was scouted is Atlas Lord. Uh, Monkey has the fighter out second, so Atlas sees that and pulls his Icarus back to keep it safe. Alright, we do see the scout there. Does he see it though? Nope. Alright, the Icarus has gone off into a direction. I don't know if uh, Monkey will pick it up though. He is randomly running into it. Interesting. Does Nope, they do not touch. <laughs> they see each other's vision lines, but they do not see each other. Okay, so three fabs for uh, Atlas Sword in one location. Just one for him, but... Aw, oh, nearly gets the fab snipe on that. That would have been good. But does not. Alright, both eco same with eco right now, but... There is one fab for Monkey. He is spending it on a tier 1 turret. I don't blame him too much, because there were two docks that randomly showed up over there. Aw, oh, and he got the Icarus. The Icarus killed the fighter, though. What a trade. But if the Icarus could have uh, cleared up those two things, that would have been a definite advantage. Alright, we see two docks forward. This is pretty vulnerable. Does he notice this? Yeah, he notices it. And he pulls it back because Atlas sees that Monkey sees it. And Atlas is worried that Monkey will come in and punish him. So pulls it back justifiably. Oh, is he going to... Oh, the Fab just... <laughs> unlucky there where his shots were missing. And couldn't micro. Very low HP Fabs, but they're still alive. And there's five of them, but... Uh, Atlas is catching right back up on fabs now. He's actually ahead in fabs. Um, and a little bit ahead on metal because... Oh, Monkey, I don't think you can afford this factory right now. You need to uh, get metal for it. You're barely at the right amount of factories. And Atlas, he's taking this pot top here. Kind of strategic, but there's just going to be four docks here. Very aggressive game so far from both. Also, this is coming forward. May be able to kill that fab, but no, the trades aren't good. He needs to do his wiggle micro. Um, Monkey's a little bit more used to this style of gameplay, I think. And now, yeah, Monkey's coming up on the other side, but we do see Atlas. They're just putting a lot of little tiny knives into each other. Just sticking them in a little bit. Not too much. Just a lot of little painful pinpricks going into each other at once. Like, like uh, Atlas is forward here. 
monkey's forward here, monkey's forward there, Alice is forward here. It's just like, it's like a zipper. They're both just like zipping into each other. Just little uh, things just clinking in. But it's painful. It's a very painful zipper. Uh, yeah, and it's just, yeah, we'll see if we get some vehicles going because vehicles start to really solidify these lines for you. And doesn't get that mix. Like he, he pushed in a little bit too much. And now he's just got some free docks on the sides. Can clean up with his own docks, but I feel like Atlas is feeling a bit of pressure, even though he's not that far behind. There is a there is a few single point turrets, and that will clean up these little small raiding forces. And now both of them feel like they need to go into tier two. Um, generally, you go into tier two when you're at 120 metal, but you can do it at 100 or 80, even 80 metal. It, you can do it. And I don't blame them. This, this map is pretty uh, violent for sure. more forces here. Now we got some ants going in and they're going to really um, just these two ants just really hold against uh, not enough overwhelming dogs but there is an Icarus here killing off just kind of poking away um, and he's going to get a good trade for it. The Icarus tanks the shot so that he keeps the air advantage going. Um, Monkey's really starting to hold his sides and I think Atlas is feeling a bit of the pressure. Um, another force coming on over here. Monkey is taking a distinct 30 metal lead. But there is an Icarus here to hold. So he's not going to lose much more. I do like that the Icarus here are just making the play. This is a pretty smart move because Monkey is not using any uh, stingers in these docks raiding forces. So yeah, there's just Icarus everywhere. Although there are some anti-air. There's a uh, point defense turret going up over here. Locus immediately. I feel like... Um, I don't know if that can work because Monkey's got just docks everywhere um, can can Atlas scout it he, he does have a slight air thing there but single laser turrets and docks just all over the place he's gonna really have to struggle to find an opening runs into one docks it misses though they're too fast because Lucas are annoying like that and then he spreads them out but if they're spread out they don't punch through docks well they punch through that docks all right gets in Gets two metal, gets power. This is actually quite important. Gets a third. That is just enough to bring Atlas back in. And he gets metal from that those locusts. It literally was just the perfect amount to even it out. It wasn't crippling damage, but just that little bit of a chip brought him back in. And the Icarus over here, I mean, there's, there's defenses going up now. They're, they're starting to solidify their forward positions. There's Gillies out here. There's so much uh, meat in front of this that, that one slammer can do a damage and not get hit by the, the Gillies. And there's slammers going in, in this direction. Could really clean that up, but he doesn't have any meat on them. Like, he, like th those units can get on top of these slammers if he doesn't pay attention. Okay, he sees this force in front. Can he pick off that slammer? Picks off the slammer. Come on. There you go, buddy. Uh, I think it's a little too much to ask him to have the ghillies control it. Just bring these two other slammers for it. Okay, he's got the other two slammers. Now he can shrug off this force pretty efficiently. Pretty critical over here. Um, on the backside, they're both just so busy that they don't have the time. Slammer goes down pretty easily to that force. Does secure that uh, peak. Does not secure this peak, though. That one's still left alone. It's like it's like the K2 summit. They'll, they'll, they'll deal with Everest first before they get to K2. K2's harder. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, more raining forces. Uh, Monkey has a slight advantage. What he really has an advantage on is the army lead. And what that all is in is a bunch of docks. Whereas um, Atlas Lords, his is a little bit more um, tier 2 focused. And I think that's actually an advantage for Atlas Lord if he can utilize it. Like if he gets that ghillie advantage, he starts killing away all these ants and stuff like that. Like, everything can disappear, but Monkey, he's still throwing in these side attacks. Uh, he's bringing these three, three slammers back, and they could do the job. 
And there is a vehicle expansion on the back. Actually, this is quite good. There's a lot of um, mechs that are unprotected. There's a point defense on this side, but he can come in and uh, clear them up on the back. All right, Slammers are coming over here to efficiently kill all of this force off. L loses one. Only loses one for like 20 docks, 10 ants. Loses one mechs. That's okay. All right, in the forward position, also, Monkey's... That army lead that he has, it's starting to close. Like... It's starting to be very efficient for Atlas Lord. And I think they both should actually go into Reclaim. There's just so much rubble everywhere. But, I mean, that's just... They don't have time. Icarus right here? I think the Slammer passed under it for a moment. The Icarus can clean that up, but... He just doesn't have enough time to focus on that. His attention spread everywhere else. Uh, Pelter going in the front, that's pretty smart, but... Atlas Lord can pick that off if he sees it. And there is, a, there is tier 2 eco going down. I I don't know though. This map is too fragile. I think I think this is a mistake. I don't think Monkey has enough butter in front to protect the bread. <laughs> like the bread's just going to fall. He can't complete his sandwich. Oh, he does. He, all right. Gilly's going into snipers. Oh no, shots are killing the Gillies though. He, he's down to two. And the commander is dead. Just like that. GG. Enough slammers. He went into the tier 2 eco, and that was a mistake. You cannot afford to go into tier 2 eco when both players are like 100 and they're barely surviving. Pretty good game. Very violent game, for sure. But Monkey, like, like Atlas, he was getting a lot of pressure on him. Like Monkey was taking advantage for most of the game, but Atlas just stuck to his guns. Stayed calm enough not to just throw everything into the front, but was still clearing up the sides and even get taking advantages. Like, like some players, like when they're like down 30 minutes, they're like, oh crap, I'm getting raided. They just put all their forces into the front and try and, you know, end it. But, um, but no, Atlas, he, he cleared them up, even though he's taking damage. He cleared them up, stayed calm, kept getting his little advantages, and started cleaning the rest of the map up. Well done. Very nice game by, uh, by, at, by uh, Ares Lord. Atlas Lord, Ares Lord. He. <laughs> when are we going to see the Zeus Lord? <laughs> uh, oh, Future Gnome versus Quality House. I should have looked into that. Lost. Oh, you lost? Okay. Mm -hmm. Alright, well, we see. Oh, Ents has a 100 metal advantage. And Dr. MD does not. And Dr. MD is building his third tier 2 fab. <laughs> Uh, I don't know about that. Oh, the archons. Eh, he's doing enough damage if he holds, I guess. He'll be fine. Yeah, on this rank, anything can happen. Yeah. Hey, Arky, did you win or lose? I lost. Oh, he's going into a, to a third tier two fab. Ah, Doctor MD playing the silver strats. But yeah, we had a lot of good games. And today, I'm pretty happy. So Kiwi lost versus you, Fair? That yeah, yep. that crazy match. <laughs> what was that match like? <laughs> okay. I mean, it was. I was winning pretty hard early in mid game. It was just the uh, he did some very cheeky stuff that got him. Well, he also went TG Tex earlier than expected. Yeah. That's a lot of good pushes off. Yeah, he apparently got like your tier two factory as well. I noticed. Yeah, I almost got to nuke him, but uh. Just as I was about to start charging it up with my excess ego, he did a cheese on me. Yeah, <laughs> Taiga had a really good match versus um, Zanker as well. Um, Zanker was doing a lot of cheesy stuff. He was like doing unit cannon and locust, and Taiga was like doing really but solid. To be fair for Kiwi, I was also using Hornets, so <laughs> <laughs> pseudo cheat. <laughs> yeah. Or I didn't to go straight for a comm snipe. Yeah. Well, Dr. MD is catching up now. He's finally, uh, he stopped building, he built his uh, third tier two fab, but has stopped it. Now he's building regular um, tier two. 
And he's just catching me right up on Eco, so... Yeah, this, this match could go for a little while. I don't know, though. Like, Ents has more. <laughs> yeah, but he's floating half of his advantage. It's just gone. Yeah, the, the float is actually hurting him. And the, the tier 2 Eco is going to come in pretty hard soon enough. Just don't know if a Dr. MD knows how to spend it. Yeah. I always find I float really hard when I don't get raided very much, because I'm not used to it. Yeah, the same. And then I end up floating like a hundred metal. I find I can spend metal fine, but I often have my power go to shit because I'm not used to ramping up my power out in advance of the fight. Mm. They're yeah. both building grenadiers, which I find really funny. Why? <laughs> grenadiers are bad. <laughs> they got nerfed really bad. We'd like to see them improved a bit. Hey, say it in balance, man. People listen there. They might mm -hmm. make fun of you for being bad, but if enough players say the same thing, then then something will happen. Yeah, true. Like, obviously, I don't want them back to how they were when they were... Yeah, just be like... The unit to get, but... Can can Grens get a little bit of their AoE back? Not before, but just a little bit. It would be nice to have them be viable. Yeah. Because I, I really like the way they have staffs. Your icons, Jed. <laughs> <laughs> what? I really like the way they entered sparks. The sparks are still viable, but they're not just completely. I mean, it was just, re it just reverted the nerf. Like sparks yeah. didn't need the buff in the first place. They did not need that buff in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the sparks were fine as is. In fact, I think sparks are a little bit weak now due to ants shooting fast. Yeah. Ants are a little too good now against sparks. I still like them. Yeah. But, yeah. I think Ants could use a slight fire rate nerf, but I don't think anybody else is considering it right now. Mm. Like, I think it should be halfway between what they were before and what they are now. Ugh, uh, Dr. MD, he's getting his eco going, and it's tier 2 eco. And Ents does not have tier 2 eco, even though he has every other advantage. That thing saying 5 APM, is that their actual APM? That's true. Like... Oh, I thought I turned that off. Weird. Hey, Dread, quick, change your icons to vanilla for the <laughs> quick, finals. <laughs> yeah. I actually had no idea that even built Grenadiers. Well, I don't. Game. I can't see what's going on then. <laughs> that's the problem. You can, you can look at the models, it's fine. True, I mean, that's what I do. I, 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 I mouse over them and then look at what they have in there. Well, Dr. MD's caught back up on army too. He, he has none of the map, but he can just kind of turtle up in one little spot and be like a good bronze and just push out. And Ents just has a bunch of army in his base. Got a million tier 2 units, but... He could probably just roll over him. Yeah, it could... No, I don't think he can roll over him at this point. He actually has a considerable amount of tier 2 forces of his own. Oh. Yeah, 150 to 200. And Dr. MD is pretty close on army value. Actually, a Dr. MD is going to push forward. He has no anti-air in this. At all. And Ents has five bumblebees, <laughs> so that that ain't good. If you know, there's some fighters, but not enough, not enough. Oh no, and he's going now. Doctor MD notices it. He tried to defend with the fighters. Mm -hmm. Why does he have no AA? Or yeah, he has literally zero AA in it, and just lost that entire force. I think that actually is we gonna call kill him. Doing a rude client. Oh, he has like three AA in the back there, so he saves like a third of his force. No, it's the bad third. <laughs> yeah, lost all his tier two, like barely has any slammers. Surely Ends can capitalize on this. Surely. That would involve attacking his opponent. He's not ready for that. <laughs> yeah. Literally just right quick, come on. But he's got some attacks going on the other side. I feel like he could legit just make a base hulk and so still win the match.
Yeah, just Hawkins. <laughs> That's a lot of tier two though, and We've there's seen men's. Seventy main units. Surely yeah. we can get a Hawkins at some point. Wait, on the topic game. of uh, Greds, I think I've used bomber hovering to kill more turrets, and I've used Greds. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I just try to overwhelm them, like Inferno's in front, Ants in the back, and just beat them down. Okay, so what brackets are we doing? Are we having the, like, triple thing, or two? Yeah, we're gonna do a triple. Um, we're gonna, like, throw, like, four silvers and bronzes into the bottom one, and I think we'll do... I think we'll do a top four and then a uh, middle eight, or six. I, like, like the top four is pretty set in stone. Like, I really want you guys to play in the top four finals and stuff. But the other players, like, I'll be like, hey, do you want to join this bracket? And they can just put a little X emoji or checkmark emoji. Um, to see if they play. Four areas of what? Just missing out on top four? Yeah. Um, who is in the top four? Uh, right now it's Kiwi, me, Potato, and Nick. Uh, yeah, that sounds like every single Uber got into it. I'm, I actually was surprised. Um, Kiwi almost did not get into it because he lost two games, and Aries almost got into it. But, but the um, the tiebreaker goes to it. I mean, we could do a top eight and have. I think there's much point given that. The yeah, point yeah, because right. Monkey Hatsune. Um, Eki and Ares would be in it, but I feel like all four of them would lose to all four of the top four, yeah. so I think it's better to put them into a to the middle bracket and see who's the best of them, rather than them just getting slaughtered by a bunch of Ubers. I don't want the fights. I agree and have yeah. Uh, Kiwi, the the top four bracket is next. You'll be going in. Um, you're in fourth place, so you'll be oh, playing like Nick. Nick again, doesn't it? Oh yeah, Kiwi gets to play uh, yeah, Nick, unfortunately. So oh, I get to play Potasia, okay. So I'll just get to Wisdom Nick two times at the finals, or... <laughs> Wait, you're gonna be fine against Potasia? Because I think it's one verse four and then two verse three, if you're doing... Yeah, yeah, one four versus two versus three, yeah, so... We have Potasia at two... Well, Potasia's Kiwi, two right, pretty, yeah. So Kiwi... Oh, maybe Kiwi will get revenge on Nick. And then me, Kiwi, you could potentially have a grudge match. Yeah. In before Nick calls for a best of three uh, semifinals, so because Kiwi happened to get the one on him. Nope. <laughs> Not unfortunate. I like playing Nick. We like you playing Nick too. All right. Well, Doctor MD's out now. Um, we're gonna have a 15-minute break. I'm gonna set up the brackets and get the lower and middle players into their brackets. Like I can have a bottom two players. Like, I can just have the two bronzes. Like, a Zoto versus Millen rematch sounds like the most hype thing in the world right now. Okay. So, starting in the north. Playing as purple this time rather than his usual black is Kiwi. With the moniker, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Except you do know what you're doing. You're building a bot factory. Everybody knows to build a bot factory. Because Neek knows to build a fog factory. Into fab, into fab. Easy enough. Uh, this map is a bit complicated. And Nick, what he was talking about was that there's a second spawn that you can do. Where you can go here. Or here for the other person. You basically start on this side of the uh, this CSG. And it's considered a harder spawn. And unfair. And so it was taken out. However, um, this spawn is pretty interesting. So what you have is you have this little bridge here, no mechs. And a lot of people use that because it goes straight to the enemy base. And there's like two mechs here. There's a lot of mechs around this crater. And then you got two larger platforms. Pretty hard to secure. But once you secure them, it's a pain in their side. But you have to secure three of them. And in the end, they can just go around into the, this kind of open area. And then on the back side... So you can kind of secure this area, but a big the big thing about this map is trying to get to this backside because there's a lot of things going on with it as well. I really like this map because it's a lot of strategic play, um, and there's like 
this part of the map right here is very distant from both places. Like they had to go all the way around the lake, get to this, kind of cut through uh, there, and then uh, play around with that. So what we're seeing now, we're seeing some air trades. Uh, Kiwi coming out slightly on top of that. I will just set on uh, Kiwi's base just to keep track of him. I don't. I'm not like Marshall where I can just set a mini map on both. Uh, perhaps I can just set it for both here. Yeah, buddy. Easy enough. This is quality casting right here. Anyway, back to the game. So, right now, um, uh, Kiwi did a little bit of air trading. Uh, Nick's back into the three fighters. Uh, doesn't have the scout though. So, and Kiwi's deploying right into a spark drop. Cancels the radar and goes right into middle. Nick, he's uh, he got one. Um, expansion on the backside. Kiwi does not have a fourth fabric yet. We don't know what his timing is, but I think it can easily kill this. I don't think it's going to kill those three though, but I think Kiwi's going to look for the, uh, those mechs over there. But right now he's at a distinct disadvantage because that one fab lead is uh, keeping him ahead. But if he can't stop that and do damage, it'll be problematic. He is getting out three more fabbers though. So that might just burst him right back into the scene. And he's getting a, a forward proxy here. Whereas I don't really like that proxy. I mean, it could swing to this and swing to that. I like it in a more central location. Really hold down this center point. So Kiwi attempted his drop. Did not work. It actually could have killed them because these forces were in front. But he just didn't drop it properly. And now Nick has a distinct lead over here in expansions. And his next two fabs are out. So he's got six. And he's been using his fourth one for a long time. Like, Kiwi has not been using his fourth for a while. Doesn't mean that Kiwi's, like, dead in the water. It's not GG yet, but Nick has a slight advantage. And, and that's what this game is about in, like, uber-level plays. You're taking a bunch of slight advantages and just hemorrhaging them. And exploiting off of them and getting yourself that win. Because, I mean, a major mistake is just not likely to happen <laughs> at this uh, level of the game. Yeah, we see them both, uh, 9 fabs to 10, and Kiwi's going into tier 2, I mean, Nick is going into tier 2 rather quickly. He's got his forward proxies where he wants them. He feels pretty confident that he can hold them without any uh, pressure. We do see a second uh, drop prepped by uh, Kiwi, though. He's going to clean up uh, this little force over here, if he can. If uh, Nick notices, he'll keep that alive for a while. Which is a problem, because these... These fabs are going straight there, and he needs to just kind of clean them up, but there we go. Got that all settled in. All right, so Nick's ahead on metal, but he is, he did kind of jump the shark, shark a little bit. He does need some uh, power gens, and the uh, tier 2 factory won't go up as quickly as he would like it to. And now we are getting some run buys here, so this is the disadvantage of getting too many fabs out, um, not enough uh, forces. Like, this could hold if he had, if Kiwi didn't come in, like, if Kiwi came in 10 seconds later, he would have held it because he had the ants. But now he does not. And now these uh, docks are going to kind of run around and get a little bit scouted. I don't think they're going to kill any mechs, but they're going to see what's up there. Oh, Kiwi, uh, he dropped a uh, fab in the middle here. A bit interesting, but there is a forward proxy going up slowly by one fab, but nonetheless going up. Kiwi did catch up on Eco. But he has not gone into tier 2 yet, and Nick is already halfway done with his tier 2. Kiwi doesn't have enough, enough force to really play around with that. And yeah, Nick's just getting a little cheeky uh, tier 2 uh, point defense on there. If he can get that, he can really secure both this side and down here. But he just cracked this bridge over here, and he's pushing forward. There, there's just a lot of openings, a lot of places to secure, and it's really difficult to hold it. Now, this this is secure, and... Nick is testing this point, but uh, Kiwi's solid on it. Got both a vehicle factory and walls to defend that point turret. Now on the backside, there's a lot of metal here, and it's it's hard to um, it's hard to get to that point because so much of your attention is on these three bridges. It's so violent, but it does need to be taken eventually. And oh, Kiwi does notice that. Pulls the fab out of the way again with the UI lag, but. So what do we see now? So we see um, 
these factories queued up to this uh, hill here, which is completely fine, but uh, Kiwi's putting a turret just in range of that. I, I wish it was a little bit closer, but uh, you can't be too close. And that will uh, whittle down th these forces, and Kiwi's already secured this side. He's going to push forward. He can kill this turret if he approaches it right with the Inferno in front. Um, this uh, turret is down. And it's actually kind of unfortunate because you can't really push it down easily with these uh, sparks and fabs. I mean, with these sparks and docks. And then on the back side, yeah, let's get a look at their air force. So, Nick's up at uh, 12 fireflies. Does Kiwi have a force? Yes, he has 17. So he has a distinct advantage, but not too big to be an overwhelming advantage. Oh, and look at that. Just, again, little poking here. Like, it's a very... You think you can, like, lock down these areas easily, but there's just enough of them that it's a little bit too difficult to do so. So I think um, what's going to happen now is that Nick is going to get his Tier 2. What The question I have is, is this a Tier 2 fab? Or is he going to go into Slammers and just push straight down the middle? Because he has a straight shot through Kiwi's base. And it's close enough that Kiwi can't react. But if he's, But he can go the long game, too. Like, he can go into a tier 2 fab, get that first, and then play around with that. But uh, Kiwi's starting to secure the backside. Um, I don't know which... I think this force is coming over to uh, help this, because uh, Kiwi sees the bomber. He was obviously dodging it with this factory. He wants that factory to live, because it's halfway done. Uh, Nick doesn't have too much over here yet. And Kiwi has a small force, like, enough to trade out each other. So they really need to keep, get these factories down and get them uh, producing to secure that side. But all at the same time, tier 2 force push up here. Yeah, I don't know when uh, Nick will reconnect, but it is a question. Oh, and I forgot to switch to game capture. Thank goodness I did. UI still bugged, but whatever. Alright. Nick <laughs> playing with a UI bug. Not great. And we'll uh, get the game going whenever they feel like it. Uh, Kiwi's probably, you know, set all his orders, so he sees the ant there. He's probably going to pull that ant back. I made that uh, fabric back. Ouch. <laughs> you don't have, um, you don't have paws hotkeyed? <laughs> I got it hotkeyed. All right, well, here we go. Kiwi's now got his dominant air force. Boombot, though, brought in. Nice and strategic. Oh, no, but this this needs to go. He, he's in the wrong spot. Kiwi? All right, sees it, loses one fab, but doesn't lose the second one. The third is going to stay up and kills the entire air force. Uh, Pretty worth it, but uh, Nick, he's got just enough forces to force this other uh, factory back. Kiwi definitely needs to get uh, points on the field. And what is Nick doing? He's building a bunch of slammers, so he is going for the aggressive play. I feel like he is going to push over this bridge and go straight for uh, the throat of Kiwi. And Kiwi's not prepared for it. Like, Kiwi can kind of sideswipe all over here and stuff, but the slammer's coming out, Like, and now he's getting gillies. But these five slammers really makes me question what's going on. And he's got the spinners for it now. Like... He remembered to build spinners, so the Kiwi can't just rely on his overwhelming air force to, to beat that down. I mean, Pelter right here is going to do a little bit of damage. Kiwi's got a 20 metal advantage, but that that and more can disappear. Look at all this negative uh, mechs. Like, that commander can dive uh, to these slammers as well. Like, it's critical that Nick does damage here. He can do safe damage by killing, you know, either of these things, but I think he wants to go for the critical damage. Yeah, he's going to go for critical damage. He sees there's safe damage here, but yeah, that that's that's energy right now. And yeah, the slammer's in his face. Now, can we see some good bombing runs? We could see some good air. It, the um, the tier two is in front of where the anti air is, but it just gets cut down. Nick uh, controls it, kills the energy. That tier two is not going to go down unless that commander gets some amazing uber cannons. I don't think uh, I think Nick's going to control that and not allow it to die. 
Yeah, that's gonna go. It's gonna be very painful. I think that's, I think that's a killing move right there. Yeah. Wow. Really. <laughs> that thing is pathable. You didn't know that was pathable. <laughs> well, I I thought Kiwi played in the meta where this map was available. <laughs> He's, yeah, Kiwi's certainly not happy with the mistake that happened, and I, now that um, tier two is out, it's just gonna go across the map and just crush all of this, these uh, disparate forces over here. I don't know how Kiwi can recover. I mean, he's got 200 metal in the bag, and he's got a real army, but Nick's got a real army behind this tier two as well. All because <laughs> apparently Kiwi didn't notice that. It was pathable. How did you not notice that was pathable? I'm so confused. <laughs> very interesting, though. But very unfortunate. There's a tier 2 fab randomly over there. I mean, that that's one small win. Like, Nick's not going to beat him on tier 2 eco, but Nick's going to beat him on everything else. <laughs> uh, counter rating over here, so... But that's going to get cleaned up by these slammers. I mean, there's only one slammer, two gillies coming up so far, so it's going to do some damage, and Kiwi does have his air force still. But he's really got to recover. <laughs> All right, Kiwi. I, Kiwi, I get the message. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's very unfortunate. Okay, but I mean, this is this is against Kiwi. He did not know the map. I provided the map bliss far early in advance. This is a ranked map, so not something that can surprise you. You can test these maps out, but yeah, I I don't know. Um, he has no production mainly. Like he he's on six factories, so he may have 180 metal, but he's on six factories. I think what we're gonna just do is go check out the uh, Potassier versus. Um, I think we'll go uh, check out another game then. I'm going to disconnect and Kiwi's going to know that this is over and Nick's going to go, or knows it's going to be over, but I don't think that matters at this point. It's a slight, slight, um, kind of giveaway, a little bit of a ghosting maneuver, but I, I think both players are just in the know that it's not going to work out like that. All right, well, let's go take a look at the bottom bracket. Well, let's go look at the Potassia versus Ferret Master game and see uh, what poison Nick is going to be playing against. Okay, version 2, 2.0 patch 1. Wow, that's quite the name. Ferret's winning, I think. Yeah, it's GG. Okay. Okay, well, they're out. Okay. Guess it's um it's a ferret versus a uh, Nick finals. Well, let's go take a look at Millen versus Zoto round 2 and see how they are playing. That's a that's a match I want to see. Yeah, there we go. Looks like uh one of them was able to make the match. It's excellent. Okay, so... Oh! 200 metal versus 200 metal! Although, Millen's not using half of it. Oh, big fight's going on over here. Zoto said that she was comfortable. Once she, like, handled the early aggression, she was absolutely fine in playing out this more macro-style um, gameplay. Got the tier 2 going. Like, using all the metal, uh, Millen's really struggling, but... Yeah, like, Millen's got... You know, forces around. Just needs to use the eco. There's a lot of idle fabs. <laughs> but um, a lot of tier 2 forces killed this major push over here. And is going to kill this push here. But that could do damage if he doesn't notice. Um, 
A lot of defensive turrets and everything here. It's very common to see just lots of turrets and not very many proxy factories or anything. And lots of air too, but none of it, you know, active at the moment. And, um, I mean, we see an army lead for, um, Zoto. And definitely... Oh, he's taking advantage over here, but a Locust is going to clean that up. Trying to <laughs> be cheeky and build up on that side. Oh, that... There, there's only docks to protect him. He's going to just send the docks in. Oh, he's got the Blue Hawks and Gillies. That can whittle that down, but... Yeah, that's... That's going to hurt. Those docks aren't going to do anything. They killed one ant for 20 docks. Alright, so... I'm just going to... I'm going to join um, Nick and Patas here when they... I finish their match, but this one's quite interesting. I want to watch it, but I gotta watch the. Uh... Okay, well, tier two eco. I mean, colonels are safe. They will definitely help, but gotta use them. Where's this colonel going? Oh, I think getting a forward position. Interesting. There's no army at it at the moment, and Millen's pretty comfortable, I should say. Overall, just got a nice tier two force. Actually, using the eco now. Um, oh, built some catapults and base. Totally fine. <laughs> At this point, it's fine to build defenses in this base, and is got some Gladys just killing the, this air and mass bombers though. Millen doesn't have an answer for it except for two air turrets that completely have the answer for him. So, yeah, <laughs> it was C all along. All right, and then yeah, we got a forward teleporter. Kind of is a. Uh, is Zoto going to do some high-level high, high level brain strats and just put them in through? I'm not sure. Yeah, chat, let me know if they uh, start without me. Uh, Fair, you got the message right, right, right? Uh, yeah, Nick's high seat, so I usually host, so I'm waiting on him. Okay. Um, Yeah, just let me know in chat when you guys start, because I'm casting another match right now. All right, back to the game. So, got it. Millen's, uh, you know, important force here. They they cannot push this bridge. This bridge is defended brutally. Like Kiwi should be taking some notes from Zoto on how to deal with this bridge. <laughs> like, this is high level strats. What the heck, Kiwi? Why didn't you do this? This is the way to go. <laughs> um, but yeah, it completely shreds that force. And over here, we got, you know, a bunch of fabs that are trying to expand, but not the case. At least pulls them back. I didn't know that bridge existed. That's really funny. Um, I thought you knew. Wait, there is a bridge? How do you guys not know there is a freaking bridge here? This was in the ranked map pool. I gave the pool out. Well, Kiwi didn't bother to notice what the pool was, because he didn't think he was going to play in it, so fair to him, but... Um, how did Ferret not know? This was in the ranked pool. We played on this map. Nick specifically is like, the, did you guys even know there was two spawns on this map originally? There was one that started you in this three mix location? <laughs> like, yeah, there, there's a bridge here. That's why this map is so hard, because you, you can control these two large points, but you have to control three. All right, uh, triple laser turret. <laughs> Doing the work. There's a lot of furnace, though. Um, it's got enough health and... The docks actually come in and save. Commander is in front. Yeah, it's going to do the DPS it needs. Nice Uber Cannon, though. Um, yeah, Pelter over here. Going to do damage on the backside, but I think Zoto is just going to take the lead. Poor Millen. I love you, bro, but... Oh, we got to find more opponents for you. And, uh... Yeah, I don't know. I think this is going to spiral out of control. Yeah, both Ferret and Potassier played their game and didn't know this bridge existed. Um, Nick simply got his tier 2 factory really quick, got five slammers and pushed across it and killed Kiwi. And Kiwi, well, he wasn't doing amazing, but he was doing good on that map. Like, they were pretty even until Nick just got that destructive advantage. I think uh, if, if the bridge wasn't utilized, I think Nick would have still probably had the advantage because he got his tier 2 eco and stuff out more quickly but I don't know <laughs> that was pretty wild alright Ferret and Nick are starting gotcha alright 
I think the win is going to go to Zoto here, but it was interesting to see how these players approach this map. And one of them knew it, and I hope Nick learned from Zoto. You can learn from Bronzes how to lock down a bridge. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's get on to it. All right, we're starting on the, the first map on an orbital map, so... Uh, Ferret is so mad about this, but I told him he couldn't complain, so he didn't complain. He just got mad about it. And... Yeah, it, it's a very... It's not an orbital system, but it really encourages orbital gameplay. So you start off in this... It's such a wide open, like, mechs are rateable, like... This is so awkward to take, like... Everything's super open. There, there's a lane here, but it's all raidable. It's all very open. And so it feels like it just forces you to go into these two moon planets, which are... There's nothing too significant about them. Like, this one has a little bit more condensed metal, so you're taking locations on it. Whereas this one's, like, perfectly spread. It's a little bit safer to take and a little bit easier, but it's perfectly spread, whereas this is more strategic. But on this map, like... You have positions, but this metal is just... Everything's so rateable. Everything's so open. And so players really do feel like they need to go orbital, because orbital factories... They used to cost 1,600 metal, so you wouldn't... This map, you would never consider going into these, because 1,600 metal just wasn't worth it. But now... Now you can easily pop in that 600, get in that 1,300 cost uh, orbital fabric, and just go and build some max really easy. Okay, so fair opening, four fab. Nick with five fabs. Both are playing pretty passive. Uh, pretty undefended mix so far. All right. One docks comes in. Super wiggles, just having trouble killing it and forces that fab back, so kind of slows that expansion, whereas Nick gets to expand for free. And that's something that's so hard because you need counter pressure here. Nick has the advantage, but he keeps putting pressure on you, but and you can have windows to exploit, you know, the fact that these are naked, but you gotta find where they are, and it's not easy. Uh, Ferret is playing into um, a type of game that he likes, though. He likes playing air. He's very much an air-dominant player, even though Nick is kind of an advantage on the air. Uh, Ferret's no slouch on that. Uh, we don't see any... Uh, we do see an orbital queued up, but that's not for a bit. And we do see the Icarus come in. He notices the naked fabs. Uh, Ferret notices this in front, but is he going to pull back? And for what? Y you already lost your, um, already lost your fabs. He's gonna go for the counter attack. He's behind on metal, but he does have this forward position, so it's kind of safe. <laughs> Air fab sees that too. Um, I think uh, Nick is gonna see that kill those. Very efficient for ferret though. Like he's gonna keep his air advantage, but. He's got to kill all this, and then do a number of things. I don't know, like... This is coming over here, that's nice. But... And Nick's got this uh, position. Ferret needs metal, he can't... He can't afford to get these forward uh, metal uh, expos, he's just got to... Get metal. I mean, this is going to be nice. It won't let uh, Nick just get this entire area for free because that's essentially what he's doing he's like gambling that you're never going to check this but yeah ferret's going to uh, notice that and punish is he going to notice too closely though like he might just run past and let one of these mechs live like 
No, he doesn't. He he lets that uh, stay, and they're gonna kill them properly. So good, good job on uh, on ferret. But the problem is, Nick is like hemorrhaging metal, so those hits won't do too much to him. Wait, did he? Yeah, now he's starting to spend, but so that actually might affect him. But uh, ferret's already behind on metal. You can pick this off, but it's so close to the base. You need to get these forward positions um, working against him, but. Ferret, I don't think he... He might check this. This is a natural location to expand to. And it's a bunch of fabs uh, building up there. Does he notice this? Yeah, he notices it. He's like, oh crap. The bomber just randomly flies over, doesn't get it, even though I don't think Nick microed it at all. He's going to pick it off, though. That does delay Nick slightly and gets these metal back in his uh, spawn. Uh, he can play it efficiently. Uh, but dodges all that. Needs real forces now. He's getting into orbital, though. Um, Nick's falling right after him. Uh, there's a raiding force here, and there are two, um, there's two stingers. Oh, this could be a big deal. Like, if Nick doesn't see this... Oh, but don't, don't run him into the docks. Run him into the fighters. Uh, it's still, it reset his bumble account, and it reset his fighter account. So that is a win for him. Okay, orbital fab goes down. Th that is a Hermes. He, he went orbital uh, fab sec, so... Uh, Ferret's gonna get his orbital fab to the other planet first. And he goes right for it, too. We'll get this up now. And, yep, going right for the uh, closer planet, um, I think. Is he just going to get a teleporter down first? Yeah, he's going to get a teleporter down. So, Ferret has caught up on his metal, but he is down on factories. Like, Nick is just everywhere with the proxies. But wait, Nick can't afford the proxies. His metal is hurt. He's at, a, like, a 50% metal. Like, Ferret may be down on factories, but he's running them at full efficiency. I, I don't know, but like, um, but Nick, like, he has more opportunities to secure these medals. Once he catches back up, he's fine, but Ferret's just doing just enough damage and enough freighting that it really is making uh, Nick work for it. And Ferret's getting uh, some metal down over here. Uh, we see our other teleporter go... Do we see a teleporter immediately for Nick? He's not uti utilizing this so far. We don't see anything on the small planet yet. Do we see fighters going over? No, we don't. So we see a lot of uh, damage in the base. Uh, Nick picks off a mech, picks off two mechs over here, just finding those little weak points. But, um... Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, he's not able to support these proxies. And he's going into Tier 2 Air. I like Tier 2 Air for this map specifically. Okay, Ferret makes an interesting decision. Um, he's going to secure this planet with his um, with his little bit of force here. If Nick doesn't notice, he's going to get that uh, mechs killed. But that also makes Ferret's main base vulnerable to Tier 2 Air. Like, you bring in some Kestrels there, everything's dead if you don't have Galata. And... Barrett doesn't know about the tier 2 air yet. Like, uh, Nick can afford it. He's he's caught back up on metal, and he's starting to really do some nasty air strats. Uh, and Ferret's uh, air force is on the other side of the planet. Like, this is a, such a big planet that it really does take a while for an air force to reach other locations. Um, Ferret's not out of it yet. Uh, there's a... There's a uh, teleporter going down for Nick, so he can reinforce, but he doesn't have the tier 2 bots to get that punching power to clear out a map like this, but if he gets down on it, that, that can help. Um, are they going over to here yet? Uh, Ferret's bringing some fighters over, but he hasn't done anything with it. Alright, and back onto the main plant. Like, the, the tier 2 air is going up. Where is, um, where is Ferret's tier 2 placement? Like, Nick's already got all the proxies set. Like, proxies should die if you get an early tier 2, but Ferret doesn't have that. Okay, just a random lone fighter there. I think he was chasing the orbital fab, and uh, Nick's been bouncing it back and forth. 
Okay, so do we see any... It, it's just a bunch of fighters in there. It, it, actually, a lot of... Like, too many Avengers in there. Why does he have so much metal sunk into that? He needs that sunk into just this planet. Ares and Soldier Final? That, that sounds like a lot of fun. Um, the other bracket's going well. Alright, two teleporters going down. Who will teleport more teleportness? That is the question. I think... I think... Uh, Ferret can much more quickly take this planet. He's being very slow with it. Nick is really using his metal. like, And he's getting in the Tier 2 air fighters. So this air advantage that uh, Ferret has, the bombers, they're going to be obsolete soon enough. And the Tier 2 factory is going to go down. But as soon as Nick sees that, gets Kestrels in, doesn't see any commander... He can uh, do that, but I don't know if he knows. I think he's going to assume the commander's still on this planet and not on this planet. But why is he building a bunch of uh, tier 1 factories over here? He needs to just kick this out. What's he doing over here? Okay, he, he's going to kick this out. He notices that and just secure all that metal there. He can take the uh, metal on both of these planets, but this main planet, he might just lose it because of the tier 2 air. Okay, a lot of damage and uh, rating coming over here. Ferret has a lot of potential to get a lot of metal on the other planets and utilize it. And he just needs to make sure he doesn't lose too much of this planet. If you get hunkered down to like one position only, there's too much of the rest of the map. Like you need to have several positions on the map to claim. Ugh. Um, yeah, Ant's pushing in here. That's going to be a problem for Ferret. He's still got he's still got 35 fighters. There's only uh, 35, yeah, there's 30 fighters in there, and there's um, there's tier 2 fighters as well. A mix of tier 2 and tier 1 is going to kill a, a lot of tier 1. Uh, picks off mechs, 100 metal lead. Ferret can do it, he just needs to secure it. Secure these planets, bunch of Avenger spam. Needs to stop Avenger spamming. There is another uh, teleporter coming down here. Oh wait, no, he's anchoring this point. Interesting. Um, and, oh, we got, we got Stingers. Stingers for, versus Kestrels. Who wins? Neither of them win. <laughs> okay, well, now we know. Uh, then, yeah, getting the Pelter Creep over here. Some defenses. Defenses are okay, like, they, they secure points if you have factories behind it. On a super widespread open map, it's really hard to make defenses super effective. But, yeah. Alright, so now we got the Kestrels coming in, and they're starting to really clean up this raiding force. Because Nick is in the red. He's going to stay at 300 for a while, I think, until he gets into Tier 2 Eco. And Nick does not like building a Tier 2 Faber. I don't think he's going to risk that against, especially Ferret. And I think Ferret's actually taking a lot of his focus on this. He did clean up that anchor position, and he's going to kill this as well, so that's pretty important to him. Um, this is not doing too well. Teleporter's going down, but Ferret's got some easy mechs on the rest of the planet. If Nick doesn't notice, he'll take it. Ugh, I'm out of water now. That ain't good. Too much talking. <laughs> but, yeah, we press on. Alright, so, Nick has the tier 2 force. He's getting the uh, horse flies down, which absolutely eat stingers even more than spinners. Um, and... Well, that, that forward uh, position, I thought the ants would clear it out, but it didn't. So Ferret's equalized on Eco now, and he can take an advantage. He's building kernels! That may be the anti-air answer. I forgot about it. Tier 2 bot has anti-air. It's just that nobody builds them. Oh, Grizzly is going to be uh, Ferret's number one fan. And there's a phone going off. Ah. Okay, some... Uh... Some weird nuisance going on over here. Tier 2 vehicles going down pretty good. You're going to start wanting to get punching power into this map. Uh, docks over here, they're going to clean that up and can cause Ferret some problems. Yeah. And... Ah, uh, but this Air Force here, 71 fighters. 53 for here, but that can really easily clear that up. And... Uh, it's six Kestrels, one Horsefly so far. I don't know how the Colonel matchup goes for it. And he's going to get this out now. Alright, so here we see... We don't have any Galetta in this base. Okay, he is building Galetta now. He's getting uh, reinforcements onto this planet. Although, I feel like he needs to secure the... Oh, he has secured this planet. There's just a random docks over here causing problems. But, 
on this planet. Oh, he has secured it. Never mind. Ferret made the correct play and brought the rest of his forces over. He needs to bring them all onto this planet, get the presence down, and he can secure it and lock down his planets. He can put down, like, um, some umbrellas as well and really secure them and so that Nick can't just plop on a teleporter because Nick's really good at putting a um, orbital fabric, getting a teleporter down, and immediately exploiting. But if you can lock it down, it, it becomes much more difficult to invade. It, this dock says he's even doing its job, right? You had one job, buddy. Killed in mechs, and you can't even do that. All right, well, they haven't engaged each other's air force yet, and... Why is that so slow? Oh, we got Hornets in now. Um, and Ferret's able to use the bombers that he has to clear this up. I don't know, though. Like, he, He's getting a lot of things there. He's got the Colonels down now. That's a really interesting um, use. I don't feel like vehicles, though. Like, we see Ferret go into Tier 2 vehicles. I feel like he should just get into the Eco. Secure this planet. Get Tier 2 Eco. And make sure he does not lose this main planet. But that Air Force is a problem. Okay, so he picks off the Horsefly. Oh, and gets some critical bombers. Really nice play from Parrot. But, oh, and goes in. They, they skim off of each other. Pretty good traits for uh, Ferret so far with his air. Uh, Nick has the bigger Air Force and Tier 2 in it. But Ferret is using it. it it's like a smaller, faster force. is just making these little plays. Oh. Oh no, oh no, 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 you, you're getting surrounded, you're getting surrounded. Okay, he killed off some of the, uh, the air-to-ground stuff. These little, uh, <laughs> little stingers are doing damage now. But the hornet's there. But wait, is this Gleda gonna pick it off? I think that Gleda's gonna pick it off and... Oh, <laughs> it got one shot off. <laughs> but the hornet's there now. But are there gillies? There's no gillies in it. Why are there blue hawks in there? There's blue hawks, there's a bunch of Gledas and... Nick needs to control that Hornet like very precisely. It requires a lot of intense micro focus. Something that he can't afford to do, so he just draws away. And now Ferret's starting to secure this planet. He's got the tier 2 eco. Building two of them, in fact. But um Nick is on this planet. Ferret counters with the anchor. Nick counters with the umbrella. And Ferret might not secure this planet. Like I feel like Ferret needs both planets in order to be fine but he does have the more expensive 35 metal one so it's not all over and he's getting into the tier 2 metal but I don't know this game is crazy there's a colonel randomly there just killing stuff but colonels aren't they don't have a lot of punching power they're very good at eco and like kind of hitting small areas but they die to any tier 2 forces oh there's an there's a hornet going here I don't I don't know if I think uh, colonels don't do well into Hornets because they just don't have the range. Yeah. Could move to it. Like, yeah, look how fast that kills it. Like, takes only like about 10 shots total and that one's already hurt. So loses that colonel. He really needs to get gillies. I do not know why Ferret hasn't gone a lot of gillies. He sees the Hornets. And I feel like gillies are going to be very effective against all, all these bots and forces over here too. The Blue Hawks are not the answer here in this specific situation. Oh, what do we have now? Just a lot of force from Nick over here. And again, all this air. Like, Ferret cannot push out. And he does see this force over here, damages it, gets rid of some of the scruff there. And he can reinforce now. He, he knows that force is there. Oh, that Hornet is so juicy, it's so slow. Um... Yeah, but Ferret, you, you got this planet. You're getting tier 2 eco up now. Get this planet down. He's got a leveler and grenadiers. I do not recommend grenadiers when there's forces like this. that They, they just won't do anything. But, oh, whatever. 100 meta lead for, uh, for, uh, yeah, because he got the tier 2 bot up and he's now securing his, his base. He's getting a lot of tier 2 in. Commander's kind of in a vulnerable position. You gotta worry about snipes a little bit. Um, and, oh, Ferret's losing some power. He's not hemorrhaging power yet, but he could. Massive force over here. That is a metric ton of stingers. Absolute metric ton. You need bumblebees to kill stingers. And he's got bumblebees, but it's enough. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe not. Like, 
Stingers are low fire rate, so they kind of pick off one at a time. So they're, they're picking them off one at a time, but then the bumblebees can still get through. That's what happens when you have lower fire rate. But Nick just keeps taking a lot of damage from Ferret's anti-air over here. Oh, could pick off these men's over here, but no, I don't think he's going to notice. He's got this main push over here. This is a scary push. It's not going into this tier 2 um, stuff here. If it was coming in from this side, that would have been really scary. Over here, though, uh, Nick has a little bit more play uh, to it. And he's also building mines, which could really catch Ferret off guard. Ferret is... Um, he's still building tier 2 fabs. He's playing a bronze strat where you just build a bunch of tier 2 fabs. He needs to start getting vehicles. There you go. Get the vehicles down. And he's securing this planet. Good on him. And he's probably going to tier 2 it up. So he doesn't have the... Oh, but... Oh, no. What about these mines? Do you know about the mines? I don't think he does. He could get this power here, but that's about it. An Omega. Oh, Blue Hocket. Oh, no. Mines. Dead. Oh... Omega is at 80%, does nothing. Those mechs aren't going down. Oh, oh, and the Omega's going. I think it's going straight for, um, for Ferret. Ferret has to get Umbrellas down immediately. Wait, where is it going? Oh, I think it's going for this planet. That's good, too. It'll kill, kill all these, um, it'll just kind of shred everything. Ferret needs to get Umbrellas and Catapults down. Catapults are the counter for, um... Omegas, but Umbrellas, like three of them can do the job. One cannot do the job. Okay, but yeah, we, we see our Omega in a real match now. Both of them are a similar eco lead, too. Similar eco, but I don't know. I feel like Barrett's all on the back foot. Like, uh, like, I feel like he should be on the front foot by having these two planets. But there's just something that feels dangerous with uh, Nick. He just has way more forces on this main planet and you can't lose the main planet. And he's going for this area now. Okay, snipes the um, tier 2 factory. There's a lot of Galata here, actually. I mean, there's forces to come in to clean it up, but I, I don't know. And, I mean, Nick continues to build up tier 2 um, mechs as well. Like, how is Ferret doing? He's building up uh, tier 2 power, like you can kind of run out on tier 2 power, but... Oh, I don't know. Okay. Goes in really quick. Sees that. And uh, Ferret, he knows that the the Omega is up, though. So he's building an Umbrella. Okay, the Omega comes over here. I think he has two into play. Yeah, he has two, two in play. I think he's going to bring the Omega over here and start doing some real damage with it. Yeah, he's going to absolutely cause problems. And there... And you know where uh, Ferret's Blue Hawks are? They're not there. If he had the Blue Hawks, he would have been fine, but he does not. And do you know where um, where you can build Blue Hawks? In the one spot where <laughs> Nick is. And he's got an SSX as well to get that real punching power. Oh no, and now Tier 2 Vehicle is going down. And we got a bunch of Tier 2 Vehicles over here, and they got the Storms in them. They got a lot of AA, but... They don't have the anti-orbital. What is Ferret going to do? He just does... He can't really... His eco is still really rough. He he has so many random things producing that... I don't know if he can really play this out. He, he's just got a lot of tier 1. Tier 1 doesn't matter at this point. You need real tactical armies. Oh, and all that just... All those Avengers just dead. Man. Yeah, that is right. Um, Nick and I, we, we built like 50 Omegas each <laughs> in a match. A very ridiculous match. Um, but yeah, Omegas are really good now. At like, just... If you don't have the Blue Hawks, they're... You always can put them in a position where the Blue Hawks aren't. And Umbrellas do not stop them. But I don't feel like... Yeah, Ferret's not really getting more eco sources. And this one Omega is just going to cause problems. It's going to clean all of this up. Like, all this trash here. Well, at least there's some... Uh, 
some uh, omegas over. I mean, some umbrellas here. The omega's gonna clean up all this anti air, though. This nice force. And I think Ferret needs to get back into a tier 2 bot factory. But he's got tier 2, um, two of these uh, vehicle factories, and is boosting out one. And I think these uh, vehicle fabs need to be building more mechs. But they're not. And now, now um, Nick's going to get in here. He's going to kill all this metal over here with the teleporter down. Like, let's see in his face. Oh, he put it at the front line. Where, where's his next teleporter? He's getting a unit cannon now. So we're definitely starting to see some real late stage. And we do see that the, um, the horse flies are what counter these storms. Oh, so much air. You need tier 2 air, but you got... Like like I said, you need to hold a position on the map so you can do tactics there. And Ferret's lost it. He does not have much at all. And Nick can just take all the metal on this planet and really start um, bullying these other two planets, which Ferret has not completely secured. And it's actually starting to turn into a disaster. Like, where is Ferret's army? He's got 250 army, but it doesn't feel like it's anywhere important. I think what you can do now... I think he has to start looking for a snipe. I think you can put um, a teleporter down here. Like, on steps, it's really easy to put uh, teleporters down on these open spaces and exploit them. Though, Nick has so much air force. Like, he needs to somehow bait the air force away. And then put a teleporter down. And then kill the comm. Or at least kill the base. Because unit cannons are coming up. Omegas are being mass produced. And... This is just nasty. This is killing a bunch of tier 2 vehicles. Not good. <laughs> I, I think this might uh, get out of hand for Ferret. I mean, we're 27 minutes in now, and it's a pretty late game for sure, but... Uh, Nick keeps on uh, building more tier 2 eco, like putting more and more power behind all of his production. And this... This uh, position here, all these uh, vehicle factories, is now gone. And Nick has a massive air force on the planet. And Ferret's just locked the uh, other two planets, which are being harassed. If he was not being harassed, like if he had secured these, he might have like a much better chance. But he's down to 300 eco, and he is not securing them. And these forces over here are on the planet now. I, I think that's going to be it. Like... You got one chance. And he's building his own Omegas, which are good on these planets. You don't want to build Artemis because you can instantly jump the Omegas away if you build Artemis. I mean, Artemis kind of secure a position, but you just want Omegas. Yeah, and we get the GG well played. Ugh, I gotta go to the bathroom, but yeah, I'll jump into the next one. Chat, please do not jump into spectator slots if I'm not in it yet. Alright. All right, we're back. Okay, so gotta really call this real quick. Um, so this map is a bit different. It's a lot of it's pretty CSG heavy. A lot of kind of quick uh, strategic locations. Pretty hard metal to contain. Got kind of um, pretty open, but got this weird little uh, mountain range over here. Why aren't my recent broadcasts showing? I don't know why they don't automatically post them, but they don't. I will get them up, though, Nimzo. I gotta just remind myself, too. And we see Nick, as usual, taking a bit of a metal advantage at the start. Gets his, gets his uh, fabs out. And they're a little bit more conservative. I think he lost, um, yeah, he lost some fabs over here. Just some early pressure. As soon as a uh, Nick sees that he killed your fabs, he just builds more fabs of his own. And so this counter rating, actually, from Ferret is pretty vital. Um, this is, like, what you have to do. You have to find a way to... He's putting so much pressure on you. You need to find a way to put, like, just a tiny little bit of pressure on the back. And the Icarus, unfortunately, is shooting the... 
unfortunate there. Like, he could have killed them both. He definitely had enough shots for it, but didn't quite work out. He does save his own fabs, though. There's going to be co this coming through, though. And he's got the bumblebee, though. And it clears up that air force. And gets his proxy down. Uh, one mechs goes down. I think the second one will go down as well. I don't think uh, Nick will let that uh, go to waste. Air trades as well. Fer uh, takes that. No, Nick takes that. Wow. Pretty brutal. And then this bomber here is just free. Because he kept that one fighter alive and then brought in his reinforcements. And now can f push everything back. I think he's going to overwhelm uh, Ferret here. The only uh, thing going for Ferret now is that Nick is just emerging on Eco, but as soon as he fixes that, the pressure is going to just intensify massively. Picks off the bomber. Very nice. Slows that down. Is another bomber prepped? Probably, but it's not right now. Um, but yeah, Nick is playing a one factory, but using it really well. And it's just hitting at this point. Like... If Ferret was able to lock down this point with that, that vehicle, then he would have been fine, but now it just feels so scared, and look at this docks, like, can come in and hit these mechs, can come in and hit those mechs, and really create problems, and Nick's already in the front trying to, look at this, he gets his turret down first, Ferret tries to get his turret down, but he just reaches it just in time, like, a lot of unlucky things going for uh, Ferret right now. Yeah, I feel like, uh, Look at this, 60 army to 30, like, Ferret just started on the back foot, and I don't think he's going to regain his footing here. I mean, he's done some damage, he's trying again. There is a force coming here, that's going to take a while to do, and I feel like the air of Nick may just very well clean it out. Randomly is able to get these uh, mechs going up, though. And exploits the fact that the turret is out of range, which is a nice little fixture here. But, yeah, two important little expansion fabs. And, I don't know. It's, like, very porous here. Like, they're just running through. A lot of fabs being made. He's going to go into Tier 2 uh, factory pretty soon, I feel. That's a lot of fabs. I can't even get the uh, turret down. A uh, bomber can do some damage. There, there's a, there's an air factory here. I didn't realize that was an air factory. I thought that was a vehicle factory. So, this isn't as secure as I thought it was. And I mean, these two ants and the sparks can clear it, if he gets lucky. But that's just a very small win compared to the juggernaut that's happening over here. And yeah, Kiwi. I mean, Ferret is just down to 70 metal. Like. Seven minutes in and you're on, on 70 metal? That's just never a good sign. And he's definitely not done enough counter damage to rectify that. Like, Nick is up on everything. Now, I think um, you can get a combat fab and start doing some reclaim. And, like, look at this. Just a random dox here. It could have killed those two fabs, but Ferret was lucky enough that that got out. And uh, more... More just raiding. Like, he can, he can like, uh, get these killed at a loss. Like, like these can all just die, but they still get enough damage. Like, Ferret can't even afford to lose a single metal, uh, like, a mech's location. Because the moment that he does, he has to rebuild it. And that just takes up so much time that he can't afford to have. Now we've got a massive force over here. And Commander's on the wrong side of the, of the place. And I don't think that's going to stop it at all. I mean, what's the counter rating? Like, oh, just kind of savage.
Oh, Nimzo did mean to play in the tournament. He just went on a hike that was too long. <laughs> anyway, six wins, two losses. Happy. DJ Nemes. Wait, Nemes. Who are you in game? What was your What's your tag? Uh, Ferret trying to get some damage done. And I mean, he's always putting Nick in the red. Like, Nick's not getting everything for free, but... He's stable. Ferret is not stable. And the moment that this tier 2 is revealed it's over like this is a low eco map that you have to like it seems like a high eco map but it's very low actually it's very strategic and a lot of rating which should actually benefit ferret quite a bit but i don't know like that that's also nick's strong game like ferret it's ferret's strong game to do a lot of rating and aggression and like a lot of strategic play but nick is no slouch on that either like Nick only struggles when you have an air advantage against him, and, like, also naval. I don't think his naval is that strong, but, um, everything else he's quite dominant on. Like, uh, Nick always, if he has an advantage, he's going to hold it. Yeah, 80, 80 metal of ferret versus 200 metal. You can just see the difference, like 180 army. Yeah, this is over. I don't know how the uh, lower middle brackets are going. I I assumed that the uh, Zoto versus Millen game was done. But I'm going to check on that. Your second place? Oh, you're hot soon? Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good on uh, Ares Lord. Deserved win. Maybe he'll keep showing up to matches. <laughs> but, yeah. Not quite the run. I'm... Those are a lot of interesting games, actually. Like, every single match in the uh, middle bracket looks interesting. They look a lot more even than what we're seeing in the Swiss rounds. Yeah, and we're just kind of seeing the inevitable. Ferret's going to try and get his tier 2 up, but I think it's over now. It's just that Kiwi lost to both Nick and some other uh, Uber and got a low seed. Like, he didn't get his second or third. In order to do that, he, he had to meet him right in the, um, right in the semifinals. That, that's just the name of the game. Like, sometimes it doesn't go your way. And I mean, Nimza wasn't playing. Batasir got smirked by Ferret, but yeah. I thought, I mean, Ferret could win. He does have some things, but yeah, Nick just showing his usual macro. Um, Kiwi lost to... Ki Kiwi almost lost to Ares Lord. But due to Ares Lord doing a Icarus strat on naval, but um, I'd have to look at the bracket. Kiwi lost to ferret. Oh yeah, no, we're yeah the the ferret versus kiwi match was intense. Um, we're gonna send that one to Marshall for sure. That that matchup was really good. Post the broadcast once this is done so I can watch, please. Um, Nimzo, don't watch the um, the Ferret versus Kiwi one because I only joined at the last part of the match. I I watched a really good match against um, Future Gnome versus Sundance, and then I skipped over, and Taiga and um, Zan Zanker 
also had a really good match, and I caught a lot of it. I wish I caught all of it, but it was really good, too. And then, like, everybody had, like, a really good match in round two. Like, Rotunda was insane. Um, yeah, I wish you were there, Nimzo. Uh, but I'm pretty happy. We got 20 players to show up for the tournament. And then um, we had three leave, but two, like, that's fine. Like, two of them were fine. Then Rude Client left, and we don't know why. But that's just the nature of tournaments, and we're going to get better about, you know, players leaving.